Welcome to Kind of Funny Star Wars in Review. It's been a long Woo. time coming, my friend. I haven't friends. seen that intro yet. It was a lot more like somber than I thought it was going to be. It's nice, though. For a yeah, second, I thought I it was going to be bad. You. you know what I mean? Yeah, it, gets you, it gets you in the mood. I wanted the, I wanted the dubstep version. Yeah. Like, okay. I just wanted Skrillex doing his thing. And then, you know what I mean? Like, do you remember? Super do you remember up. the Andy, disco no version that. of the Star Wars theme? No. Oh yeah, it's the <laughs> shit. In, in the in 1977 when Star Wars came out, this is uh may the facts be with you. By the way, a little early, a Love little it. early here. Well done. But Nick came up with that one, and I, I enjoy it quite a bit. <laughs> it's good. Uh, but uh, they they put out a disco version of the Star Wars theme song. It was hot as fuck, as you can imagine. Uh, and it was number one on the charts for two wow. weeks in a row. Wow, <laughs> good for them. Yeah. So, yeah, the disco version and the dubstep version, both equally outdated. <laughs> 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 well, to be fair, dubstep was outdated right when it came out. Yeah. So. so this is Star Wars in Review. We are finally doing it after popular demand. Uh, so here's the situation. A lot of people have been asking, how are we doing this? What is the actual order? Of course, as always with this show, it's release order. We're always going to do release order. That's the only way that it's you right should way. be watching these movies uh, when you're discussing them. So that means episode four, episode five, episode six, episode one, episode two, episode three, episode seven, Rogue One, yeah. episode eight, Solo. Oh, no. And then The Last Jedi. Last Jedi. It all leads to episode nine. The no, Skywalker the saga. saga. Yeah. The rise of Skywalker. The rise of Skywalker. It ends. It all comes to this. Exciting stuff. How about that? It is exciting yeah. stuff. And it then is. we get a brave new era, hopefully led by Kevin Feige, which would be fascinating. We'll see. I doubt it. Um, d- but we're also doing Terminator in the middle somewhere. We're figuring all that out. Okay. Yeah. But if we do all that stuff, that's all in addition to. These are all going to be week. Star Wars is weekly going through. Um, we're going to figure all that stuff out. But this is Kind of Funny Star Wars in Review. You can watch it live on twitch.tv slash Kind of Funny Games every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Or you can watch it later on youtube.com slash Kind of Funny, roosterteeth.com, or podcast services. Just search for Kind of Funny in Review, Kind of Funny Reviews. Any of that stuff will work. Uh, you can get the show ad-free by going to patreon.com slash Kind of Funny. And you can be a producer, just like Al Tribesman. <laughs> And Anymore. David Mintel. Mind freak watches. Bah! Oh, me that's, that's here. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay. just, just like is he did. levitating? Ah. Like, I can't oh, tell. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, 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 oh. It's Mike. <laughs> the Mike's is uh, standing. I got it. I'm throwing it out. We're good, <laughs> yeah. we're good to go. We're good to go. Sure are. Today we are talking about Star Wars Episode Four: A New Hope, a.k.a. just Star Wars. Star Wars. Just Star Wars. <sighs> yeah. Um, released on May 25th. 1977. Uh, <laughs> Not 29. Yeah, I did accidentally write 2977. <laughs> Directed by George Lucas, a budget of $11 million. Yeah. Was well, that a seven, lot back then? It was a lot. Back it was a lot back then, yeah. but still. Um, Star Wars budget was initially $10 million, but was boosted up to somewhere between 11 and $12 million after it was completed. From just like technical issues and having to make more prints. Do they had to also invent stuff? Good, you Crazy know? stuff, man. Box office of $775.4 million, a runtime of two hours and one minute. Uh, it earned a total of $775 million, surpassing Jaws in 1975 to become the highest grossing film at the time until the release of the second Star Wars? E.T. Oh, okay. The Extraterrestrial oh, yeah. in 1982. Yeah, there was a while where Spielberg and Lucas were kind of going, going back, and blows, back and forth. Uh, Gia was looking up good friends, right? uh, Harrison yeah. Ford, a and younger Spielberg. Harrison Ford. Yeah. And it's crazy. He was like 35 when he made this yeah, movie. Yeah, he was old. Like, that's nuts. This was his second movie, right? He did and American Graffiti first? With, with George Lucas, yeah. yeah. And then pretty much from this on, it just goes year after year of him being in hit after hit after hit. Uh, I remember New watching Hope, Blade Runner, Indiana Jones, yeah. and then just kind of sequel, fugitive. Sequel, sequel, sequel. He was the Will Smith of the seventies, I'd say. Hell yeah! Dude. You know what I mean? I remember good. watching an interview with him, and he was like, "Star Wars was the movie, obviously that that broke him, that that made him into a mainstream celebrity." And everyone else was like, "It was crazy. It was cool." Like they interviewed Mark Hamill, and he was like, "It was such a wonderful time." And then Carrie Fisher was like, "It was great." And then uh, and then uh, Harrison Ford was like, "And I knew that if I did this right, I could be a huge star." And I was like. Mm. Yes, <laughs> and I was like, "Fuck yeah, Harrison I Ford, get after it!" Once you tell us how he's you really so, feel, dog. he's so fucking good in this. Think movie. about it this way, though: Harrison Ford in the eighties got to play not only Han Solo mm-hmm. but Indiana Jones, mm-hmm. who are pretty two distinctly different characters. And Blade Runner and Deckard in Blade Runner. He was unbelievably iconic, very very fast because of those two roles. Yeah, crazy. And, and three characters with real cool names. 
Like, yes. very cool. all of them name, very yeah. cool names. <laughs> uh, when it, the dog, India. When adjusted for inflation, Star Wars is the second highest grossing film in North America and the fourth highest grossing film in the world. It received 10 Oscar nominations, including Best Picture, winning seven. In 1989, it became one of the first films to be selected as part of the U.S. Library of Congress's National Film Registry as being culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant. At the time, it was the most recent film in the registry and the only one chosen from the 70s. In 2004, its soundtrack was added to the U.S. National Recording Registry. Today, it's regarded as one of the most important films in the history of motion pictures. We have to think about it this way, right? Coming out of the 70s, which is the time where they just didn't make movies like this. The closest analog you'd have to a sci-fi movie like this was like Flash Gordon, which was yeah. campy and silly and and the effects were horrible and it was more like a made for like what we would think of as a made for TV movie right now or actually even a YouTube video now. And then you get Star Wars. And there were a lot of people, you see those interviews with people that go, I didn't know what the hell even people that worked on the movie were like, this is gonna fucking suck. Mm -hmm. And then I'll never forget there's there's a lot of great documentaries out there. One of them is actually on uh, Amazon right now. But there's they, they talked to the production designer who was like, this movie is going to be bad. I don't know what's going on because they didn't know all – they didn't see what, what George saw in his head, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't understand the visuals, the visual effects. No one had done stuff like that before. And the people that had, it was something like a space odyssey where it was just a slow-moving like science fiction, like deep science fiction thing. So so he was the first person really to pioneer what we think of as the Fantasy. modern sci-fi action movie. Yeah. But and then people – but they talk about – they go in and they watch this movie and the first – they see this the scroll, right? And they're like, what the fuck? And then it wasn't the production designer has this great thing where he's like, it wasn't until I saw the de the, the Star Destroyer go overhead with that so blasting long. the the cruiser that I realized, oh my God, this is something brand new. Like we've never seen this before. And people like I have friends of mine that have that went in, they're older friends, obviously, mm -hmm. but that went in and saw it and they were like, I had to go back and see it like again that my day. parents. It was yeah. so unbelievable. And I feel like that's just such a thing where everybody that's our age group, kind of like their parents grew up seeing these movies I multiple feel like, times in theaters. I feel like that was our Jurassic Park. Like, uh, our first experience being in the theaters being like, we've never seen anything like this before. When that, was, like, when was like Jurassic Park? Like, Wasn't Jurassic Park like 96? 90s, yeah. No, but I mean like for us, oh, you know, yeah. like us being kids going there and being like, this has never been seen before. Yeah. The, like, these are real dinosaurs. I've yeah, never yeah, seen yeah. this. I feel like that the analog is pretty similar to back in the 70s being like, what is this? Yeah. This is like what the fuck are we watching right now? Also, I, I watched a really interesting video where they were talking about how like the first cut of, of A New Hope was bad. Oh, I bet. Like, well, he almost had a heart attack doing this, didn't he? Yeah. Didn't he have some sort of like really serious troubles? I, I hadn't health heard that. problems. Yeah, but it was it like it stressed was, him the fuck so out. He lost from, his voice for a long time. Did he really? So, yeah, during the direction of the movie, <clears throat> and then he ended up just making cue cards to Whoa. direct people. And like he didn't have that many cue cards, and some of the cue cards shows the budget. Literally, That's where the budget literally went. just said more intense or faster, and like that was pretty much the two that they leaned on the most. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, but, but, yeah. You're bringing up a good point, Kevin. Of like, there's a fascinating YouTube video that's yeah. like Star Wars saved in the edit. Yeah, and it talks about like I think it was his, his wife. wife at the time yeah. like had to like. They like re-edited things like uh, the the shot of the uh, like the Tuscan Raiders. Tuscan Raiders where he's like above Luke. They had to like rewind it and like uh, like make it forward because they didn't have a shot long enough of him doing that. Uh, and like there were moments where there wasn't any um, like stakes that they had to add things to like the Death Star run and all that stuff. That it's fascinating. I highly yeah. recommend checking out that video. It's, awesome. it's super the, good. The original um, script had C-3PO getting shot and dying at the <gasps> end, and uh, it was George Lucas's wife that was like, no, you should keep the droids. It's like, they should be a thing that, like, survive, yeah. but you should kill Obi-Wan. And, like, that obviously wow. was a much better decision. Yeah. <laughs> That's a great decision. Yeah. She yeah. totally yoko did, huh? <laughs> 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 it's crazy stuff, though, like, seeing this movie countless times right like all of us like i don't know if i've seen a movie more than this like over time mm -hmm. yeah and it still wows me and it's still so impressive and maybe i'm just so bought into the hype and like believe it and like i've heard all this cool stuff so you're like looking for things and you're thinking about this movie yeah. differently than we think about sure. other movies but it stands up and when you look at how iconic every single aspect of a new hope is what every single scene every single character every single music cue sound effects like it just keeps growing and growing, and it's like you talk about that initial shot from the crawl to the uh, you see the the um, the, the smaller cruiser. ship, yeah. and then you see the that the, yeah. the star destroyer, the scale there. But then later you see the star destroyer going to the Death Star. It's like yeah. they just keep upping the ante. Well, not only that, but they have those wonderful characters. moments of all the ship designs. Right, the production design and the music and the sound design are the or what makes this to me stand out. That and the visual effects, the acting. 
is not great from the leads, unfortunately, but they have such Solo's great support. Amazing in it. What's that? Like uh, Han. uh Han's great. Ha- Han has but several the, the, moments. The dialogue they like, give him is just so is kind of cringeworthy cool. at moments. Alec Guinness, on the other hand, who plays Obi Wan, and the guy that played uh, Tarkin are phenomenal actors. And so like you have those yeah. as believable good and bad guys. And that to me was always like that's always the thing I forget about. Is that this movie starts and Darth Vader is not like the end all be all boss no. of bosses. Mm-hmm. He's got a boss in this who who he respects. Like at no point does he go, "I'm gonna force choke this motherfucker." Yeah. No, he doesn't do that shit. He's like, "Don't fuck with Harkin because yeah. he'll he'll mess some shit up." But you know, it's yeah, it's definitely you're mentioning. We've seen this movie so many times. It's hard not to watch this and like hyper analyze every shot. Just like with our newer set of eyes now that yeah. we're looking back and si- looking at this old movie, and it's well, just I mean, you showed me a YouTube video yesterday where some digital effects people decided to redo the fight between Vader and Obi Wan, so and it looks good. leaps and bounds better than yeah. any visual so effect amazing, yeah. that's in that's in this movie. But, but they didn't the movie have that, has a charm. Yeah, they didn't have the technology to make oh, the scorch sure. marks no, on the wall not. and stuff. It's just it's, not only that, but they didn't even have the technology to actually make like this is one of the things that you brought up, which is like they didn't have the like and they do it now. The reflection of the or the light emanating from the the mm-hmm. lightsaber onto their faces. They didn't have the t- the ability to do that. They didn't have the ability to as the cameras tracking down the trench run as something blows up, the thing goes off into the distance. Yeah. If you notice the explosions just, just kind of stay there for a second and they yeah. cut away. Yeah. They, they just didn't have that stuff. It doesn't take you out of it, but it still yeah. works. Yeah, 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 it still works because you just believe so much. I, I just think this movie's so interesting to look at because it everyone talks about the hero's journey and all this stuff. And again, we've we study this stuff for years, yeah. whether it's in school learning like just how literature works, or then us being fucking nerds that love stuff. Star Wars, and it's fascinating to watch this movie and how different it is in setup, where we don't see Luke for what feels like an hour. We don't see Han until about an hour into the movie. And it doesn't feel like, like he feels so developed and so mm-hmm. right, lived in this world, and immediately you know so much about every single character that we're introduced to. And it's like, that is the thing that I just feel like was such a brave choice on top of all the production design and new special effects and all that. It's just... It, you this movie starts and you it, you're introduced to this bad guy and these robots and then even the robots have a cool thing to do where they get they separate and then the Jawas capture them and it's like you just believe it it doesn't feel like coincidence it's we it's weird that it feels it's it feels epic but also a very intimate hero's journey and that's why I think this movie does so well is because if you if you go if you beat it out like uh, for all the dramatic beats, it really, really, it, it follows that classic three arc structure, that classic Coke structure almost perfectly. It's it's really, really cool. I, I just really admire the amount of, of world building this early on in a movie where you can tell he's thought about this and you can tell he's thought about what the lore is and what this sort of universe is founded on. And it's just, it's so cool to even hear... I still like get chills even though I don't like the Clone Wars, but just hearing about you found the Clone Wars, like, yeah, I love shit like yeah, that. I so just cool. admire the hell out of that. Dude. There was yeah. so there was uh, such mystique built around. Yeah, it, dude, you know? really, really good. Uh, there's one thing that I did find a little jarring is every time they turn on the lightsabers and there's that hard cut of them being like, yeah. "All right, switch the sabers out," and yeah. it, it just it looks so bad. And then also, man, the added CGI looks fucking yeah. terrible. We'll get to that. And that's now, speaking of that, yeah, I did something pretty interesting. Whoa. Did you find the original so, cut? There is a thing called Project 4K77. If you Google it, you can find stuff. You can figure it all out. Um, there's a website called the Star Wars Trilogy.com. What they do is their entire thing is trying to find original prints of the Star Wars movies and restoring them as faithfully as possible to the original film. Mm. It's just run by George Lucas. And it's in 4K. <laughs> no. So it's the, the only opposite. way currently to, kill it. to watch Star Wars in 4K. Um, and right now, if I remember correctly, uh, uh, New Hope is done and Return of the Jedi is done. Uh, Empire's not done yet. Um, but 4K77 sounds so cool. And yeah. so, yeah, the movie that's 4K77 and it's the different years that they come out um, is their like, code oh, names for this. Okay. But you can find them online. You can get access to this. And that's what I watched last night. It's the first time I've watched the theatrical cut since um, I was a little kid growing up. And so my dad's better. like taped from TV version of it, right? So it's like, I was so young that I didn't remember any of that stuff. So I'm so used to the special edition that watching this, I was like, oh shit, like I've never actually seen the differences like this. It's a huge difference. And also it's 4K. You mean, <laughs> so, you, mean cool. you didn't miss Han talking to a person as Jabba, but really it was CG and he like the, walks over Jabba's tail in that one scene. It's so, so horrible, oh, dude. Not only I, so I like the, the <laughs> like, th- that I think fits to the character of him like walking over his tail, but like it's done so poorly. It's so bad, yeah. And on top of that, when watching it without that scene, because in in this that it just doesn't seem that happening. dude it's is just not that's there. a deleted scene. Yeah, yeah, like just not there. So the way that it builds and cuts is 
they just talk about Jabba and him owing Jabba and all this stuff. Yeah, it's scary. And then it comes to him being like, yo, we got to get out of here. Yeah. And it's so much cooler. It's cooler because, so one of the reasons why a lot of people didn't like it originally, or, or like him going back in and screwing with it, aside from the fact that it was a classic piece of cinema that was near perfect, as far as I was concerned, was that <laughs> that build up in the first act, right until they get on the Millennium Falcon, is a slow build of tension. When you cut to seeing the, the stormtroopers in the desert, and there's four or five of them, they're walking, and they're in the coolest fucking army you've ever seen, and they look scary as shit. And then you see this goofy ass fucking, fucking dinosaur back. walking around. It completely kills the tension of that, right? Yeah. And this is the problem. That set where he's like, J- uh, Chewie's like, dude, you owe Jabba. And he's like, I know I owe fucking Jabba, dude. People are going to, but this is going to get us out of it. And then Greedo comes in and is like, I'm going to kill you right now because he's what you wanted dead or alive. That builds tension. When we see, and by the way, that same dialogue is then reused in that other scene. There's actually like a couple lines that he says that he's already said because you could tell they weren't planning on using that. They were like, oh, this is not good. So when he goes over there, him walking over the tail and it going like, blah, 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 is, again, kills the tension. Jabba goes from being this mercurial, scary fucking gangster character that's a loop, like this out there in the universe, this dangerous fucking galaxy, to this comical, bad CG, like, Muppet. It's not good at all. And yeah. they, they cut that out for a fucking really great reason. And the Greedo, and then the when we see Jabba, fr- first when we, thing. When I finally see Jabba in Jedi... It's like, fuck, totally. that's Jabba the Hutt? Absolutely. Like, what the yeah, fuck yeah. is that thing? So the the Han shoots first thing, it's like, God. having not seen Bang. this in so long, it's so much cooler. Which is, it's not even Han shoots first. He's the only one that shoots. Yeah. 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 No, Greedo doesn't even shoot. It's Wait, no, does, awesome. doesn't he shoot no. after he gets killed? No. 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 He no. never shoots. Like, Interesting. Dead. And I'm like, well, that is way he fucking He walks cool. in, yeah, yeah. and he, he tells in no uncertain terms. This is a problem. is because he's a little subtle about it, but you get the fact that he's going to kill him. Because mm-hmm. he's like... I don't care if you're dead. Like he's like over my dead body. He's like that's the fucking that's the plan, right? And you get that he's gonna ice him, but Hans one beat faster than him. He's a little bit ahead of him. Just blast him from under the table. And the way they they shoot, like the framing of the way they shot that scene before it was edited with him like leaning back back, and he's playing up with the top while he's unholstering. unholstering And it's so so cool, it's so well designed that it sucks that they try to make Han like a better person. (laughs) And then they comp his head yeah. moving <laughs> to avoid the shot. Yeah. And like you don't even see a blast on the wall where the where the laser would have hit. It's, it's terrible. terrible. There were a couple changes though that uh this one is really awkward without. Uh when R2, when Obi-Wan first makes his appearance and he kind of saves R2, R2's in the special editions hiding behind a bunch of rocks. And this one R2's just there. <laughs> and the Tuscan Raiders Raiders are walking by and just like don't see him. And it's like uh, like what the fuck? There's <laughs> no way. Like it, it was shot so it's, that was a yeah. it was a bad shot. Like that definitely added to it. And then they follow it up with Obi Wan like making the weird sound, <laughs> <laughs> which I never noticed before in my life. It's so it's horrible. Way worse than this. Is <laughs> it? It's know. way worse. I'm like, how could anyone have thought that that was acceptable? I, I have seen this movie probably 50 times. I've never noticed that. How? <laughs> I thought it. I thought it was one of the other, like one of the uh, what do they call the Tuscan Raiders? Yeah. The same people yeah. doing it. I, I didn't realize. Well, that. They, yeah. add, they added reverb in the. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. They, I well, think they totally weird, changed the sound. They're in a crazy oh, really? canyon. The, yeah. Sound, yeah. The, the, the only other, the only aspect that I will give him kudos for is going back and, and fixing some of the effects because the land speeder effect is dope in this. Yeah. And if in the original one, you could literally the see blur. it. Like, you see, you see bumping blur, up and down. But even in the 4K, it honestly wasn't that bad. Really? That bad. That's the thing that impressed me so much about watching this is. So many scenes that I thought were oh they're better in the special editions like there was the the land speeder and then the X wings like when just the scale of the final yeah. battle honestly because that CG shot of the X wings not that bad it's not great though it's not and it's not great and when you watch this I'm like this is totally serviceable like this gets it across in a way it's, that's it's, not distracting it's serviceable but but what they were able to do with models and what they were able to do with the motion ca- uh, the motion tracking camera systems was so cool that it you don't need it no what i'm saying is this was serviceable to get the scale across yeah 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 but what i'm saying is we didn't need it right like if we had just cut to them and the like the original cut just cuts to them in the cockpit right we don't see that grand sweeping shot of the, all the x-wings in the back we, just we, don't we do it. in the original that's what i'm saying we do it's just there's not hell of them it's just they're like they're models Oh shit! I yeah, and I'm, what I'm saying is like that's serviceable. Oh, that's it good. Works. Yeah, yeah, it totally yeah. works. Also, Why? How, how crazy to, that like the design of an X-wing is still so the coolest modern fucking shit ever. Fucking like I don't like when I when I think back to like the old uh, Lost in Space series, and then they made the movie, and of course they have to modernize all the tech because it just looked old and dated back yeah. in the day. But still, to this day, 
these ships, like uh, TIE fighters, TIE destroyers, X wings, B wings, y, like they all look so fucking awesome. Dude. And that's the thing, like the, the the production design is so great in this movie because you have these ships, you have the rebellion that looks slightly run down, right? You have the like the X wings don't. It looks like. People don't bother cleaning them because they don't have the time. Then you have that stark contrast between that and, and the, the Imperial ships that are, that are so just cool. so Those tie fucking fighters. cool. When they're like when they're sneaking on the Death Star or the uh, to to get Leia out, the black walls, man, just the black walls with just that in the inset lighting, the LED, the, which would now be LED lighting, of yeah. course. And Tim would love it because he would oh, live right. there. Is just. But even so the, cool. the cutouts on the walls, yeah, those like so rad. oblong shapes, are like so cool. Yeah, a, a random just fact that I noticed is the Imperial March doesn't make its debut until the next movie, yeah. until Empire Strikes Gun. Back, Gun. Gun. and it, Gun. it's Gun. weird because it's like you hear similar kind of motifs building when when Darth Vader's there in the opening shots, but like it's weird when they're uh, getting tractor beamed into the Death Star. You know that if they had that theme, then it would have been there. Yeah. But I'm instead, glad. they're playing a, a, a variation of the uh, like just Star Wars theme there. And I'm like, it's just cool, interesting stuff where it's like seeing the world not only just get built so well here, but then we know it gets better. But we should we should get into the plot. Let's get into the plot. Ready, ready, ready. Hold on. Hold on. I was thinking of this on the drive over here. Hold on. How, how did it go? How did it go? Um, Greg still gone, but Nick will say the plot. Will... Will there be a lot of sexual jokes? I hope not. Well, you're going to get disappointed. <laughs> By the one female character in this movie besides Aunt Peru. There's literally, in this entire movie, two, two women. Yeah. Jesus well, at least, they, at least Leia's actually a fairly well-written character. Star Wars, episode four, A New Hope, a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. A Woo! phrase that got me both excited and incredibly confused when mm -hmm. I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Just super, like, what? Is this in the year 1600? Yeah. This is a long time ago? I don't, why are they Is this so when, like, Columbus was sailing the ocean blue? I swear to God, my mom had to sit me down and be like, stop worrying about it. <laughs> stop. Because I was like, I don't know, uh, how do they, were so, they so technological? It doesn't matter. Uh, we get, of course, the blast of music mm. with the now iconic scroll. Star Wars Episode Four. I do hope. Uh, we get a nice couple paragraphs that basically some to uh, read. It was a period of civil war. Rebel spies managed to steal the plans for the Death Star, and Darth Vader is is pissed off. Man, he is on their asses. Princess Leia races home with the stolen plans to save her people and restore freedom to the galaxy, but not for six more films. Because don't forget, they still have this damn thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, but I made a note here. I love how the music gets really, really, really intense. Um, during the scroll and then drops out to that just subtle like flute theme and we're like oh what's going on and as we pan down we, we see the blast start coming as the cruiser comes in and it's so freaking cool and then we get the other iconic shot which is the star destroyer going overhead and it just keeps going forever of course parodied in space balls we're just yeah, keeps going going so over. long <laughs> so good. some fun uh, little facts here about this uh beginning part the iconic opening crawl is a nod to old flash gordon serials and was accomplished by placing two Two foot wide die cut yellow letters over a six foot long black paper and passing the camera over the paper. That's Holy really cool. shit. Have you seen that? They have it's footage insane. of it and it's yeah, so Yeah, in the cool. documentaries. You know that uh, he wanted to make Flash Gordon and couldn't get the rights, so he made Star Wars. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, and then just a random little thing here. Um, the name of the second draft of the movie was Adventures of the Star Killer, as taken from the Journal of the Wills, Saga 1, The Star Wars. He needs to stop with this Will God, shit. God, hell yeah. No, I he love it, dude. Stop no, with this that's a terrible shit. fucking This is name. like a Rush, Coheed, and Cabria album. Like, I love all the subtitles and shit. It's so wasn't, dorky. Wasn't, wasn't I'm stoked the first... to you for Birds of Prey. The emancipation of whatever the fuck oh, her name yeah. is. <laughs> uh, of course, on board, Leia's ship, R2-D2 and C-3PO are freaking out. The ship is about to be overrun and everything is devolving into madness. Uh, rebel soldiers with giant sperm helmets uh, and cargo pants take up a defensive position, preparing to be boarded as the cruiser is dragged into the cargo hold of uh, the Star Destroyer. Uh, the door is blown open and all hell breaks loose and we get our first glimpse of, I mean, I'll just say it, the coolest armor ever put on film. The stormtroopers. Oh yeah. Okay. Well, that's it. Gets outdone. Scout yeah. troopers are the scout fucking troopers. awesome. <laughs> and I will also say that this, the the speeder bike troopers in Jedi have slightly cooler. Armor. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, those are yeah, okay. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. so I love cool. the, the ones helmets. that have the ones that have the helmet, like the the, yeah. the on Tatooine, the ones that are oh, actually the black. searching. They have like the little uh, extra little shoulder pad yeah. and the backpack are pretty uh, fucking. Yeah. The backpacks are flamethrowers. Played with the fuck of those Legos, dude. Oh my god, they were cool. The scout troopers on their they also have they have the really cool helmet, but they also have that little. 
add-on on the back. A little something, something. I don't know what it does, yeah, but it looks so fucking cool. There's like cool. buttons that aren't pushable, Yay. but it's still cool. <laughs> I, I want to yeah. shout out the uh, Stormtrooper armor that I think debuted in Rogue One, where it's like uh, the black armor. Yeah. Like, like, mm. I, I would I would make an argument for that. that like, well, that's in like the top two. We get a hint of that in this when we see Vader's squad that he rolls with. Yeah, yep. yeah, the yeah. TIE fighter uh, they're, armor. They're, 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 all black. Too. Yeah. they're a little more chunky uh, yeah. in this one, though. But like somebody was like, hey, guys, I know we're trying to take over the universe, the galaxy here, right? What if, throwing this out there, we had the most menacingly dope stormtrooper armor ever made? And Vader was like, Sign us up, man. approved. Let's make them all white. Vader, I want them to look kind of like you, but some of them are white and some of them are going to be Vader just dark. Vader make those decisions. He goes over to the Emperor. And show, like, me the, show me the uh, the work and uh, yeah, just have it by Monday. Uh, yeah. I'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. The door's blown open when the source troopers coming in and they just make short work of all of these unfortunate rebel soldiers. Uh, C-3PO catches up with R2, who is recording, finishing up recording a message from Princess Leia. And we see her and she's very, very mysterious, wearing her hood and PJs, and it's great. Uh, Leia sneaks around. Um, let's Only see. Oh, you, on the Rick. what's that? Only you. She's I just a weird so flowing PJ. <laughs> she's like a. It's like a bathroom. Dude, she looks super comfortable when she's she very when comfortable. when she gets saved by Luke and she's just chilling there. It's like, oh, you were about to get killed, but you look comfortable as fuck. It was uh, a Sunday. She was yeah. like, she just got back from brunch and she's just like, Listen, you know what? I'm doing a me day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Carrie Fisher, the actress who portrayed Leia, was planning on wearing a bra underneath her costume, but Lucas didn't allow it because he said that there was no underwear in space. We've evolved past that. Uh, that's amazing. On board, Vader is uh, choking a motherfucker out to find those Death Star plans, but they're not on the main computer. This is a consular ship. <laughs> if this is a consular ship, where is the ambassador? And I love that part because he's like, I'm not buying this bullshit. But also, that scene that just. Does it pan over or is it cut directly to him? And he's just holding a dude up. It cuts and, and you see his feet just. Yeah, dangling. I'm, I'm just back to the underwear thing. I'm, like, I'm just picturing like fucking Mark Hamill being like, "Well, do I have to wear underwear?" Like, oh, of course you. Do. I don't want to see your dick, dude. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I see your, your little there's, Hamill. There's no chance Solo is wearing underwear. God knows, Solo oh, goes no. free yeah. balling the whole time. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. It gets in the way of his feet when he has to pilot, when he has to drive. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't want anything binding it up because that's where the power center comes from. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, meanwhile, Leia's sneaking around uh, and she blasts a couple stormtroopers with that dope ass skinny blast that she has, but they get the better of her and they, they use the. I think this is the only time we ever see this the stun setting on Yeah, Blaster. so done with the blue ring. Bloop, 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 and it just. It just She'll be right. fine. She's going to be okay. But, like, but what about the guy she just shot? No, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rob's dead. It was just such a weird thing. Like, oh, set him to stun. And, right. like, oh, our guy's dead. Well, like, I mean, they need her alive for information. Sure, you know yeah. I mean? But also, it never really feels like this. Like, and I, what I loved in the original trilogy is you don't really know who these stormtroopers are. You don't really ever see them without their masks. You don't get if they're clones or not clones, or if they're just idiots or whatever. They're not but clones. they just don't care. They're just these disposable things. And that's what's great about it. Uh, meanwhile, R2 and C-3PO bounce over to the escape pods. R2 has a secret mission now and uh, and some plans. And C-3PO does not want any part of it. But he gets to the escape pod anyway. Because why not? Uh, thankfully, there's two idiots in charge of shooting down all the escape pods. Decided to save some ammo that day. Because there's no life signs aboard. Uh, and so Must it must have been be a malfunction. Function. Meanwhile, Vader's rolling over in his fucking grave. Because these guys not, he's not even dead yet. Because the whole point of this thing is to find these electronic plans. And these guys are like, oh, there's just an escape pod that goes out here. Nothing could be on yeah, it. What fine. could be on it? And Vader's like, I don't know. Maybe the electronic plants <laughs> <laughs> could I, be on it. I do want to shout Idiots. out. There's a there's a book that uh, has like all of these short stories that happen kind of during A New Hope, uh, and that's where we get like where Yoda wanted to train Leia over Luke, uh, and then there's a little kind of scene in there where there's like more people in that room. And there's someone working, and I forget like why, but she's like, "Thank God they did not shoot that because there's all these like, it it's bullshit, and it's like totally like trying to give reason to why that happened, but it's like cool little like lore bullshit." Where so the book's like, like Lion King 1.5. Yeah, 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 yeah. totally. Yeah. Oh, years ago, so. wrote one of those stories. Oh, uh, nice, that book. nice. Mm -hmm. There's Collins. also go ahead. I was gonna say there's also a comic. Do you remember this one? That it's a comedy comic about like two. Um, Troopers that were on like Chris uh, Farley and David Spade, but like they they like stole stormtroopers' outfits and then they are in the rest of the movies like sneaking around. I don't. Is this legacy stuff? Uh, no, I mean this is like just a. It's called Tag and Link or something e like that. Mm, no idea. It, it's really funny. It's just where it's like they're in a bunch of shots where it's like, wait, that stormtrooper like in the hallway scene where they have to jump the thing could have just shot him, but it's like they're like, oh, no, don't shoot the him. Sneakers. Those are, those are, that's, they're, that's Leia. Oh, that's yeah, really funny. Yeah. 
Uh, all it's I'm saying stuff. is, if, if I found out these two guys did this, I would force choke one of them and make the other one watch. I was just like, yeah. this is what you get for this being stupid. Uh, but Vader has his hands full, of course, with Princess Leia, who tries to lie uh, by telling him she's a diplomat, but Vader calls bullshit. You're part of the Rebel Alliance. We track several transmissions uh, to your ship that, that are these plans for this Death Star, and you're part of the Alliance, and you're a traitor. Uh, and Vader is told, then Vader is told about the escape pod. And he quickly puts two and two together and says she must have hidden the plans there. He orders troops down to retrieve them, uh, and nothing can stop us. He's like, nothing can stop us now. I'm like, oh, we didn't need that, but that's okay. We get it. You're hard as fuck. Uh, <laughs> down on the surface, C-3PO and R2 argue uh, as to which direction they go. R2 wants to continue his mission, and C-3PO just wants to uh, live that sweet, sweet service life. So they, uh, they both go their separate ways very, very, very slowly. To the point where I would be like this. All right, everyone, gather in. If I were Darth Vader, like company-wide meeting. How long does it take to get to the surface of a planet? These things are literally walking at less than <laughs> a third of a mile an hour. Is how long? It took them a whole day, a whole day to get from the ship up there down there when well, the escape pod made it in like five minutes. That's because they were finishing like scanning, like searching the, the ship before they were like, it's not here. I was just Let's like go down there. Bad, Guys, bad planning. I just said the plans must be on this thing. You get a thing down mm-hmm. there. And you go and you go, okay, well, I see two tracks, and I can still see one of the droids right there because it's moving again, slower than molasses. Again, though, R2 moves a lot faster when we don't see him move. It's true. As evidence later. It's true. When, when Luke's like, where'd he go? And C-3PO's like hiding in his garage. Yeah. <laughs> Who the hell knows? Yeah, he's like, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh uh, uh, C-3PO sees a ship off in the distance and calls to them. He's saved. Meanwhile, in the hills, R2 is being hunted uh, by Orko from He-Man. They blast him with an electronic bolt, and he falls over like a like a used trash can. And they're Jawas. This is the first time we see them, and I love the Jawas. Oh, they're so they're fucking so good. good. I've always wanted to know what they look like. Me too. Yeah. Uh, it's like Tali from Mass Effect. Nobody yeah. understands that reference. Uh, they pick... No. They pick his little ass up and carry him back to the sand crawler, which, again, is another moment in, in Star Wars... In, in the Star Wars world uh, universe, where I just think, what a great choice. It's a wow moment. This unbelievably hulking, monolithic thing that's just sitting there Slowly. with tiny little windows at top and nothing else. It's so cool. It's so, and for how small they are, like, yeah. they, have a little, so they have a little city yeah, there's a in little there, thing. a little town. It's like but a, I just love, again, the creativity of this fucking movie where it's just like they, they make bold choices that are hard and difficult, and they're yeah. like, fuck it, we're going to make them cool. When they get R2 to the, the sand crawler, and then they put the little like vacuum yeah. and it sucks him up. It's like they didn't need to do that. No. They could have just walked him in, but no, they're like, we need a fucking cool ass shot. Cool way to get, how to get the droids on. Sucking him up, man. Yeah. Uh, before they do that, of course, they put a security bolt on him and then they suck him up into the belly of the beast where he sees a junkyard of busted ass droids. Uh, it's sad as fuck, but my favorite is the boxy one that looks like that walking trash can. Oh, you know, the one? Yeah. I love that little It's thing. like that scene in Detroit that Become Human. When they're just in like the trash in the in the uh, did, you, did you play the trash? No. Oh, damn it! I, I get I get yeah. I it's like a idea. big like yeah. it's like a, what's the word I'm looking like a landfill. Yeah, just like a landfill. That was that cool first person shooter that you go online and play, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's a great callback. Hey, what's up? <laughs> and then he's like, oh, what's up, C3PO? Because C3PO's there too. Guess it didn't work out for either of us. Uh, now we can be slaves for these little mini wizards. Isn't that gonna be fun? The next morning, the Imperial. <laughs> Finally, the Imperial Star Troopers get off their asses uh, and headed out to the desert to look for the uh, for the mission plans that could literally turn the tide of the ensuing war. But guys, take your time. You know what I mean? Make sure you get your 15 there, buddy. Dan and Rob. Oh, wait, Rob's dead? That's right. We don't care about him. <laughs> He's out of the well, ship. He died of the ship. I love that one dude comes out of the sand and is just like, look, droids. Dude, okay, so that shot, right, uh-huh. is the one with the CG do yeah, and, and all the, this yeah. stuff, and it's really bad. Seeing it without the CG is awkward as all fuck. The frame is hella empty. There's just one stormtrooper for a while saying stuff. And then another one just <laughs> randomly just pops up with this thing. just like, droids. And I'm like, might be the Got worst it. shot in the whole movie. Agreed. I, and it's just like, I bet you that stormtrooper found that on the the, the ship earlier. And was like, I'm going to keep this ship for yeah. later. So I'm going to look like a I'm goddamn hero. Yeah, like, I'm not going out like Rob. I don't have a... <laughs> I, don't I want the a, better armor. I don't have a huge issue with the added CG scenes. Like, they don't look great. But my, my main problem with them is that, like, I feel whenever they are there, Lucas really wants the focal point to be this really silly sounding alien. Yeah, like, that's... it's always like a... That's my problem like, is like, thing, and you've it's got like, this, you've got the uh, the little robot that, like, drops something as they're going into town. Yeah. And to drugs. me, it's, it's very distracting, and it's very silly. And this movie's not silly. There's no silliness in this, right? It might be ridiculous, 
but every character believes that they're legitimately in danger. And so the audience does. When you put that element of goofiness in the background, it just completely destroys totally. the tension. Completely. Mm. And it sucks because I was like scared when I was watching this when I was a kid because you saw these two stormtroopers and you were like, they look like bad motherfuckers that are going to go murk They look people. like demons. They look scary as shit. Demons? Well, thank yeah. God they brought their fucking pet dog in the back that we can all play with later just to decompress, right? I'm fucking Lucas, you idiot. Uh, <laughs> I know you're, I, I I know you're think, a billionaire, but suck it, Lucas. I don't think the do-backs look you that bad. I, I think that like the egregious it's, shots are like the... Um, Java scene where it's like that. We didn't need that. We did didn't the, need that. Did the back though need to like? Whoa! Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm Jar Jar. And like oh. fart or some shit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> like, come on, dude. Come on, bro. Uh, let's see. They find the droids' tracks and figure it all out. These are the droids in the pod. They said continuously clone. Uh, oh, <laughs> and they said continuously cloning the same person with lead of morons. Ha! <laughs> These guys are really smart. Uh, C3P and R2 are on the market and they are hot commodities. Time to find a new owner. Uh, one note about the Jawas: uh, they make house calls, which is cool. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize. Yeah, that I like that too. When I first watched this when I was a kid, I thought they went out to them. Didn't realize that they just rolled straight up to Uncle Ben's house. Right in front. I was like, heh, heh. <laughs> like, you know, like like ice cream guy. Yeah. Ice cream man. Elotes, paletas. Exactly. Like they're selling shit out there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very, very cool. Uh, Aunt Baru tells Luke to make sure that the droid, uh, they get a droid, Luke. if they get an interpreter, that he speaks bocce. Uh, Uncle Ben doesn't need a protocol droid, though. He's like, oh, no, like that. He need oh, excuse me. Why did I say Ben? It's also not bocce, Owen. right? It's Batu or no? Doesn't matter. It's spelled B O C C E. We can look it up. Doesn't um, matter. Uncle Owen doesn't need a protocol droid. He needs someone who speaks uh, who speaks the language of moisture vapors, vaporators. Uh, luckily, C-3PO speaks lo uh, load lifters, and they're almost the same thing. So you're hired. Now shut up and be my slave. And never tell Aunt Peru what happens in my work lab between the hours of 12 a.m. and 6 a.m. That's Uncle Owen's private time. Jesus he Christ. wrote that out. He, he really did. did. <laughs> <laughs> and he was proud of it because yeah. he looked at Andy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Uncle Owen <laughs> tells Luke to take C-3PO up on the... Uh, C3PO and this broke ass red droid in uh, and clean him out. Broke ass red droid. That thing droid. is fun. That thing is not. I'd be like, dude, you can't buy that fucking. Yeah, no, that is a dude. broke this ass. That's a pawn shop little shit. head. Uh, uh, but then Luke is like, well, oh, I was going to go to Tashi Station. And he's like, stop being a fucking 10 year old, like Luke. Chill. You're a 19 year old man. Okay, act like it. Uh, as they bring the droids in, of course, the broke ass one just completely explodes. And Luke's like, "Hey, what are you trying? What are you trying to do here? You trying to pull a fast one on us? This one's thing is totally gone." Ah! And he's like, "Stop! <laughs> Be an adult." <laughs> it's like his, he's always been kind of a little bitch. How dare you? Uh, as they leave, uh, oh yeah, they, he goes, "Okay, what?" A C three B goes, "What about this other one? This R two droid? I've worked with him before. He's great." And he's like, "Cool, we'll take the blue one. It's cooler anyway. I like the blue is my favorite color. It's always been my favorite color, even yeah. though Tim just caught on to it." Um, and then he's like, and then C three P O is like, "Yeah, you know, you owe me one R two yeah. for this, like, you know." And then like, you think Luke overheard that? I was like, "What was that? Like, what do you mean? Oh, owe him for what? Like your, your boys? You got." What you pulling over? He, What's he, this? Like, what's said, going on here? Are, I feel like he are said you robot lovers. You, just like no, but like, what's happening? There's something else happening here that you're not telling me about. That's really important. You know? We're about to bring you yeah. into our home. Yeah. <laughs> I feel just like C3PO. We do, buy you from these little wizards. <laughs> shit. C3PO <laughs> set that up though, because he was like, "I've worked with him before. Yeah, he's, he's very good in, in his prime." Yeah, but you could tell there's something deeper. Yeah, there's something like yeah. deeper there. You owe me one. It's like wow, like Jesus. What, what if Luke overheard that? Like, wait, whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. Uh, it just, it just feels like no one's taking these droids seriously because they get him downstairs and see three people. I was like, ooh, an oil bath. This is gonna feel <laughs> good on my joints. And then, our, and then Luke's like, oh, look at all this carbon scoring. It looks like someone tried to blast you apart. You guys must see some action. I'm not gonna think anything about that. Who cares? We'll just fix you. He's like, yeah, tons of action, dude. Yeah, <laughs> dude. Uh, there are people on our asses yeah. right now that may or may not. Rob's dead. Burn your aunt and uncle <laughs> I mean, to death pretty, later. He gets pretty stoked. He's like, the Empire? What? Yeah. Tell me more. And they're just, C3 feels like, I'm a bitch. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you were joined for the rebellion? Like, holy shit. The way he turned around when they said that. Way too like, quick. No, I thought it was, like, he is, like, ready to go and fight, you yeah, know? Well, he's he's bored as shit, yeah. Uh, Luke All his friends are also leaving to go fight for the rebellion. But also, where do his friends live? Like, he, this dude's out in the middle How of nowhere. How do you meet people? Like, what's, do you go to high <laughs> school? Yeah, he, dude? They, uh, one of the deleted scenes that I've always loved is there. there's a scene where he goes and hangs out with, uh, I forget 
the name of I think Biggs or someone, yeah. and they're about to leave, and it's like a group of them, and it's such a weird like out of place. Like, why the fuck would you think this scene is a good idea? It Kid does it nothing. Kid is still but there for this, con- <laughs> for this conversation. Like, you know, it is the setup of like, yeah, his friends are leaving. He was supposed to leave this year, and his uncle pulled some shit on him. Being like, stay for one more year till the harvest is done. Right. And it's like, bro, you got droids. Maybe got it. Clear. Maybe Owen deserved to die. Who knows? Damn. Damn. Uh, I, Luke, I mean, that's harsh. Luke tries to dislodge something from R2, but instead dislodges a portion of a message from Leia. Uh, help me, Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. R2 is uh, is property of Obi-Wan Kenobi and has a private message just for him. Luke doesn't know anyone named Obi-Wan, but maybe it's Ben Kenobi we're maybe talking about. Maybe it's old Ben. This what? is always so. This is always the part <laughs> that I always sleep and logic of all time. This is always the part. Obviously, like when you watch this, you're like, I don't understand why any of this makes sense, right? They they go to hide this kid on the planet, but they give him the last name Skywalker, right? And that was the also the planet where <laughs> where Anakin's Anakin was from. from. And apparently, this is his legitimate aunt and uncle. And then also, Obi Wan's gonna hide out and ta- and, and and watch over him. But to, to throw the Empire, who we've already established is a bunch of inbred dipshits at this point. But in order to throw them for a loop, he's just going to change his first name, not his last name. Because if I were looking for Tim Gettys, I'll tell you what, Jim Gettys, yeah. I wouldn't even know. Must be a different guy, man. Oh, my God. Turn the lights back on because I can't see anything. This Nick, is, this is a world with probably billions of inhabitants or a universe. You have Galaxy. To figure, you figure Galaxy, Kenobi and Skywalker right. are just like Smith and Jones, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's They're what you have everywhere. to do. <laughs> but, uh, he Googles Ben Kenobi. He gets 400 billion, yeah. of them come up. <laughs> no One of my Facebook favorite family, family Guy jokes when they do the whole Blue Harvest was just like, Obi-Wan Kenobi? I wonder if they mean... Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah. <laughs> it's so ridiculous. Uh, Luke wants to play back the whole thing, but uh, uh, R two says his restraining bolt has short circuited his recording uh, system. Remove the bolt, and maybe he'll be able to play back everything. You dumb, gullible child. Uh, He's Luke like, you won't be able to escape from here. Yeah, it's, there's stairs. Uh, when Luke takes it off, uh, the message disappears, and Luke complains again like a small child. Uh, he gets called away, and C-3PO uh, gives R2 shit, and he's like, they don't like you. I don't like you either. Uh, R2's goes, response, I'm sorry, but R2's response, I fucking love. What video? Yeah. <laughs> so good. What video? <laughs> uh, over at the dinner table, Luke has blue milk uh, and lunch with uh, o- Owen and Beru and tells them that the R2 unit might have been stolen. He mentions Obi-Wan Kenobi uh, and Owen and Beru shoot each other a look. Uh, Obi-Wan died the same time as your father died. No, but there's no Obi-Wan here. He's like, what about the guy, the weird hermit in the mountains? They're like, oh, yeah. no, mm. never, never heard of him. Also, uh, why does Owen Beru look like she has a show on HGTV? <laughs> Like she does <laughs> not like, check out our moisture. She is boss. not dressed like everybody yeah. else. Dude. We're gonna, we're we gonna we gonna said the same thing where it's like everybody looks spacey, like Luke's looks spacey, even Owen's got like the weird robes. The cool and robes. Maroon just looks like she's on a fucking television show in the seventies. Yeah. Like, Love what? it. Uh Luke of course wants to know more about his father or any of his past really and just gets shut down immediately. Uh, and then he wants to revisit their deal is what Kevin was talking about earlier he's like listen I told you I help with this I help with the harvest but I want to go to the academy and Owen punts it another year and says we need one more year man we'll make all the money we need and then you can go of course you get you get the you start to get the feeling like he's never going to let him go because mm-hmm. it's for his own safety uh, and then as uh, Luke bones out uh, Baru is like you can't keep him here forever he's like Luke- Aunt Petunia he's like he is like Aunt Petunia uh, he's like the Dursleys that's why I thought you'd hate this part uh, Luke's not He's just not a farmer. He has too much of his father in him. And then Owen goes, that's what I'm afraid of. Mm-hmm. That's such a scary statement now yeah. that you know. Yeah. Well, it's crazy Everything. because you're like, oh, that's what I'm afraid of. You thought originally you're like, oh, he's going to be adventurous and like, yeah. and you know. He's getting into trouble. Be a rogue and crazy little devil. No, he might be uh, <laughs> the person. Devil. He might be the person <laughs> that kills half the known universe. We'll see. The music swells and Luke watches as the dual suns set what over the horizon. Scene. Oh, my God. Awesome. Mm. Guys, I want to say this right now. Like, we love Star Wars. It's a, it, They're very, very good movies. But I don't know if a movie has ever been elevated more by a score. Oh no! This I is think like 100%. John Williams makes you smell my drink. It's so strong. I think John Williams' score makes these movies like a fifteen out of ten, just because it's so perfect. Like I can't imagine perfect. it with any other score. This is. Weird. I mean, this yeah, moment no, it we wouldn't really make sense. Yeah. yeah, like that that scene. No, it's beautiful. It's beautiful. Uh, of course, Luke looks out of the horizon, wondering if he'll ever be a laser sword wielding wizard knight or. Well, Uncle Owen's pot farm finally start turning a profit, <laughs> and he can start living that DJ Cow life. If you so, know what I'm talking yeah, about. Dude. Do Another they collect one. moisture? Is that what a moisture who, farm is? It must be right. You know um, who Aunt Brew reminds me of? Barrett. She reminds me of Jesse Pinkman's mom. 
a little why. bit. Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> I, I, I get it a little bit. Yeah. Same vibe. Uh, Luke rolls back downstairs and finds C-3PO by himself hiding out in the shadows. Uh, R2-D2 is bounced. Uh, Luke heads upstairs to look what, for R2. What was C-3PO doing? He's like, Sit, I'm fucking like, sorry. Yeah, I'm Dolby. Well, he, was, <laughs> he, was, he was scared that he was going to get torn apart. C-3PO no, he was hiding in weird the, things. He, he was hiding in the corner doing some uh, weird shit, you know? Yeah, I, he was preparing I for that the hour. It was 12 a.m. to 6 a.m. He was owing them joints. that car thing. Uncle Owen's like, bring out the gimp. He's like, oh, no. No. Okay. Okay. Uh, Luke, <laughs> uh, Luke, Luke heads upstairs to look for R2-D2 there's no sign of him it's too dark out there and there's too many sand people around to go looking for him so they're gonna have to wait till the next morning uh, during which Luke the next morning Luke uh, takes out the speeder to go and find R2 and this is another toy I had when I was a kid I just thought it was the coolest thing on the planet the speeder's so fucking the cool the speeder's so cool so as they ride through the canyon they pick up R2's tracks unfortunately uh, some sand people have picked up the tracks as well when they catch up to R2 uh, the little droid ge- uh, uh, geeks out several creatures are approaching from uh, oh, freaks out, <laughs> not geeks out. Uh, several mm-hmm. creatures are approaching from the freaks southeast. The Luke uh, takes up a, por- uh, a position on the hill uh, above him, so to, to go and take a look, but and he can't, but he can't find any of them. And then finally, he finds two. He goes, "Oh, there's two of them." And then, oh shit, there's one literally standing above <laughs> me, and he knocks him the hell out. Um, they knock his ass out and start dragging him over to the land speeders so they can pick that thing apart like it's just a just a Ferrari and Compton. A lot of crap. A lot of crap, like, lot of crap in it too. They were just like, what? What is, what is plastic? This it's just a plastic thing. I'm gonna park this thing out. <laughs> it reminds man. me of the scene in Dumb and Dumber where Harry's like fixing the toilet and he like grabs like that main part. He's just like, oh, what the fuck that's doing in there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then uh, we get the howl. Something out there howls like a banshee and it scares all of the uh, the Tuscan Raiders away. <laughs> Uh, and even though it's having a tremendous amount of time navigating the rocky terrain in its giant oversized robe, they're like, this thing's scary. This guy's clearly on fucking PCP. Let's get away from this guy. And they run away. Um, Alec Guinness had to do that. He had to go in his robe. Dude, he got fucking paid <laughs> out for it, though. He got points on this movie. He was talking shit, too. Yeah, he <laughs> no, was he talking was mad like, shit. Like, this is going to be crap, but stuff. I have a percentage, so <laughs> let's hope it's not. Yeah, Obi-Wan finds Luke knocked out and calls over to R2 to roll over. When Luke comes to, he tells him, uh, rest easy, son. You've had a busy day. Uh, what brought you all out here? And the droid claims to be the property of Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, Luke says, uh, do you know what he's talking about? And Obi-Wan says, that, that's a name I have not heard in a long time. Mm-hmm. Luke's like, you know him. He's like, yeah, he's me, bro. How did you not figure that out? And he's like, well, I had an inkling, but... Uh, smoke my pot. uncle fucking told me it was wrong and he's like I don't and this is the sad thing is like he looks at R2 because I don't remember ever owning a droid you lying like, oh, piece of right. shit uh, they hear more sand people off in the distance and head over to, uh, up to gather C-3PO has been torn apart at this point um, uh, let's see uh, they take oh, oh and they take them all up to uh, Obi-Wan's dope ass crib up on the mountaintop <laughs> just cool as shit like great that. views nice views man yeah like I can see got he's a little throwing like a 60s in cocktail party in there yeah. where he's like hey I've got this new thing it's called Quailudes. Do you guys yeah. want to try some? Want some Quailudes? Sure, I'll try some, man. I'm down for anything. It's the Doing systems. all the death sticks up there. What could possibly there? go wrong? So the, the, uh, just a fun aside here in the Star Wars comics, which uh, all these comics and extra media stuff, it's just let's just fill in gaps that don't necessarily need to be filled in. But there was a, a run of the mainline Star Wars Marvel comic that's still ongoing right now where it was just tales from Obi-Wan's journal. And it's Obi-Wan during the, the time period of Luke growing up when he was like a little boy. And it's just a bunch of things of him chilling at the crib, writing this journal, but then every once in a while, like going out and fucking up the Tuscan Raiders for to, like for protect fun. to protect Luke. Oh, that's cool. So it's like there's that's just like a bunch really of different cool. things of him as he's growing up being protected. It's cool, unnecessary. So he's been killing Tuscan Raiders for years. Oh yeah. <laughs> Why not? Uh yeah, they're scared of him, obviously. <laughs> it turns out Obi-Wan and Luke's father fought together in something called the Clone Wars. They were both Jedi Knights. Uh despite Uncle Owen telling Luke. Uh, that his dad was a pilot on a spice freighter, which is which is a lie. Uh, and, uh, sure was. Obi Wan basically takes offense to that. He's like, "Your dad wasn't a pilot." He's like, he's, "Your dad was the best pilot in the galaxy, a cunning warrior, and he was a good friend." Uh, oh, and he goes, "Which reminds me, I have something for you. Your father wanted you to have this when you were old enough, uh, but your uncle wouldn't allow it. Really, just turning the screws against old Uncle Owen mm-hmm. here." Uh, and he goes, "Like well, he's like, what is that?" And he says, "It's your father's lightsaber." What the fuck can this movie get any cooler? Yeah, this is the oh weapon of the Jedi Knight. Not as clumsy and random as a blaster, an elegant weapon for a more civilized age. And your uncle kept calling you a pussy. So, <laughs> <laughs> fuck man. Also, this lightsaber was used to kill a bunch of little kids. Yeah. <laughs> And sand people, for all we know. No, no, this thing is a <laughs> no, mass murder. No, no, it, it for sure killed a bunch of sand people. So uh, yeah. Of course, Luke takes it into his hand and fires this thing up for the first time. And when he did, 
That was, I think this might, I think so. This might have been the moment that I was legitimately hooked on Star Wars for the rest mm. of my life. Just hearing that sound effect, the sound of the lightsaber coming out of its hilt for the first time, sounding like just piss and fury, was just the coolest piss thing when I was a kid. Fury. So obviously, <laughs> you're talking about the the score, like making these movies better. The sound effects as well, like yeah. so iconic, so amazing. Some fun facts here: uh, the sound of a screeching Tie Fighter engine was created by combining an elephant's bellow and an auto driving on rainy pavement. Chewbacca's growl is a blend of bear, lion, walrus, yeah. Yeah. and badger. Wow. Whoa, I you didn't know badgers made have noises. You can't growl unless you mix yeah. in a little badger. I'll say the only that. sound effect, my least favorite sound effect in the whole universe, a TIE fighter is shooting. What? What? Just a uh, beep, beep, beep. Oh, yeah, I see that. Like, it's just like a little howl that as it goes right. <gasps> oh, no, that's cool mm, shit. Yeah, no, I just so mean that. Cool. It's just like a shitty fart. And know? then the final one I got for you. The famous lightsaber buzzing whoosh was made by blending the hum of a 35 millimeter, millimeter film projector and passing a broken microphone cable by the tubes of an old TV set. Ooh, that's so, so fucking cool. They, uh, the other one that was cool is the blaster sounds are the high tension cable wires. Like they just went out and they were like, they put like, there's the audio engineer would put on his and he was like, it's that crack. I heard somewhere that the, the blasters were a, a horse neigh reversed. What? That's what crazy. I heard. Huh? Uh, no, I'm just saying that's crazy. Yeah. Dude, can you I imagine heard how much I heard fun? the Dubex was Alex Jones yelling on his radio <laughs> show. <laughs> Dude, can you imagine how much fun it would be to work at fucking, uh, what is it, Skywalker Sound? Yeah, it's cool. Uh, Lucos. Things, just making weird noises. Oh, God, it'd be amazing. Yeah. Uh, Lucos, and then, of course, I asked a question that apparently no one wants to tell him. I said, how did my father die? And Obi-Wan says he was killed. Again, another lie. I was killed by an old pupil of mine, Darth Vader. He was seduced by the dark side of the Force. And he's like, the Force? We're getting a lot of exposition here. Lot the Force of- is what gives Jedi his power. Good fucking God. Fucking what? Oh, he sounds so accurate, too. <laughs> when, when did Wano become a Jedi Knight? Why is it always me? I know when he's so well. I remember Annie when he's small boy. Small and <laughs> We've already established how small Annie was. Are there any other pertinent details? Are the the mics picking it up? It doesn't matter. I hate this (laughs) fact. Why does it have a beard? I don't know. I love that you're not wearing the shirt. You went shirtless underneath the Jedi garb. Maybe lots of costume water didn't understand. What? What? That's (laughs) it. All right, Wada, let's speed right. it up here. Thanks, Wada. Thanks, Wada. <laughs> yeah. Good job, oh, Wada. Look at that pumpkin, eh? By the hair on my chinny chin chin, eh? Oh, okay. Let's get the accomplished, Wada, eh? Woo. I need. Oh, shit. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. All well. right. Yeah, Bear, are we okay I was wondering there? if Wado yeah. was going to come through. But the light come out. Something fell. Wow. That's okay. It's, it's fine. It was fixed. It's thank fixed. you. Uh, thank, and thank you, uh, Wado. I appreciate that. Uh, we'll see you <laughs> It was a really films. good impression. Really good impression. Really, really well done. Uh, huh? Luke requires about the Force. He says, what is the Force? He says, the Force is what gives his Jedi a pow- his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us, penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. And, t- and to me, what a perfectly good... Explanation. Mm-hmm. We don't, don't need, need anything anymore. more than nope. that. Just a force Let's that, not just an amazing life force that these some microorganisms. people are able to tack into. The fuck your metachlorians, so fuck cool. your wills, fuck all that stuff. It's just the force. Some people can do it, some people don't know it's around. It's cool. But also, want? I love just how quick like Luke is ready to jump on board. Well, like, if, if you no, are a boring pot though. farmer out it, in Humboldt, it, you know what it, I mean? It, it ends and he's like, I can't do it. I'm gonna go back home. This is crazy. No, you know? no, but then how? No. But then a minute two later, well, after well, his fucking his family, family was burned like, alive. Not only are they burned alive, there are their corpses but see, right there. Again, this is what <laughs> he mourns so quickly. <laughs> Holy this is what shit! I'm talking about. This he got over about, it fast. about that classic uh, uh, screenwriting structure, right? Is that this is this is mm-hmm. classic Coke right there? He's given the objective that's going to change his life, but he pushes it away. He's not ready for it yet. And then there's another inside another incident 
that pushes him into the second act, which is so good. And that incident, of course, is that he literally tries to go home and cannot. Mm. And now he is set onto this new path and this new adventure, which is really, really cool. Uh, yeah, everything that just happened, you guys talked about. Uh, Obi-Wan unlocks the whole message, by the way, from Leia. Uh, she needs Obi-Wan's help. She's placed information vital to the hands of the survival of the rebellion in this droid. She needs Obi-Wan to take it to her father on Alderaan. Uh, help me, Obi-Wan. You're my only hope. He must alert- looks like, what's up with that cute girl? Yeah, he's like, what's up? She's so cute. She seems yeah. so familiar. Uh, Obi-Wan, I think I like her. Obi-Wan immediately turns to Luke and says, you must learn the ways of the Force. If you're to come with me to Alderaan, it looks like I can't get involved in this, man. I got I got work to do. Uh, you can tell he wants to, but again, he doesn't have to. Uh, back in space, Vader, Star Destroyer, it has returned to the Death Star. He and Grand Moff Tarkin walk into a leadership meeting already in progress and drop a bomb. The Imperial Senate is done. The, Imp- the Emperor has dissolved the Council permanently. The last remnants of the Old Republic, Republic have been swept away. Um... And then one of the guys like, hey, man, fear of the station is what's going to keep all the local systems in line. And what about the plans those rebels stole, man? Because if they get this, this it could make us vulnerable uh, to attack. And then uh, uh, then I forget the general's name speaks up and he's like, oh, it's General Mahdi. He's all like the station is now the ultimate power in the universe to which Vader's like this. Sh- this ain't shit compared to the force. And the guy's like, man, d- your devotion to that old religion, hokey is, religion, is, hokey religion yeah. is dumb. And then he's like, <laughs> if I saw someone do that, I'd be like. Gotta learn, man. Don't fucking yeah, don't say don't that do shit. This to Vader, man. But I do. We have that awesome moment where Tarkin's like, "Stop it, stop." Yeah, and, he, and Vader Vader's listens. just like, "I right, do my best," yeah. which is cool. I thought like because he, he was just pissing me off. Me. <laughs> like, he just respected on, me, you know. Man. But that was a really, really interesting and cool choice on Lucas's part when he wrote this, which was to actually have someone to have superiors to Vader, so that Vader could have because that what's genius about that is then Vader himself has room to grow, and in growing and doing that in the progression over the next two films, he's he has a character arc. Which actually leads to his redemption story, which is he cool. That's why it feels good when oh, yeah. at, at the end of Jedi, which is great. If he had just been the bad, bad for bad sake guy, it wouldn't have had the same impact. How do we feel about past spoilers? How do we well, feel about weird Looper? with the timeline? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Future past spoilers. Tarkin tells him to stop. Vader will find the location of the Rebel base before the place is op- uh, this before uh, the Death Destroyer. Excuse me, Death Star is fully operational, so we can crush the rebellion once and for all. Uh, back down on Tatooine, Luke. Uh, Oh, uh, Luke and Obi-Wan come across the Jawa sand crawler, which has been just nuked by stormtroopers. And they tried to make it look, what's cool is they tried to make it look like it was Tusken Raiders. And he's like, none of these blaster marks are, are way too precise. Which is and the like, look at this. Line yeah. He just, no. I mean, he fought. You figure yeah. he's fought. Well, I get before. that, but like with everything, all the jokes about the stormtroopers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. just funny. Shots. Yeah, it's true. I like to think that like there's a, a range where it's like a precise shots and it's somewhere in the middle, you know? Of course, uh, Luke freaks out because he's like, oh, shit, if they tracked the droids this far, maybe they tracked who bought them. Uh, he jumps in his land speeder and rushes off to find Uncle Owen and Aunt Beru just barbecued. Barbecued. What's on the menu? Oh, uh, this sounds. This place smells good. What's on the menu? Uh, Aunt and Uncle Jesus mm-hmm. Skywalker Christ. is what's on the menu. Human flesh. Uh, back on the Death Star, Vader brings his torture ball into Leia's cell to get that location of the Rebel base. Uh, <laughs> it Luke just has a needle on the side of it. <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Luke speaks back to Obi Wan. Like, uh. Guess what, man? <laughs> yeah, she's like, get out of here. <laughs> Starts playing with. It. He's like, Push stop. It Why is everyone always doing that? <laughs> uh, back, uh, back on Tatooine. Luke speeds back to Obi Wan and says, "Guess what, man? My aunt, and uncle, I have been burned alive. I'm free." Let's go on this adventure together. Let's go over to Moss Eisley Spaceport and get the fuck off this dead rock. Uh, they perch up on the rock overlooking the town. And Obi-Wan lays it out. Moss Eisley Spaceport, you will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. Wow. And really back and really bad CG elements added afterward for absolutely no reason. This whole thing just reeks of villainy. So much better without it. Real quick, one thing I noticed through watching it again this time, because I was trying to pay a little bit more attention, is... <laughs> When they're on the speeder, like the way C-3PO and R2-D2, R2-D2 is laying on the, the back of the speeder. Yeah, they just like tethered him in. Like yeah. when your friend's got a two-seater truck yeah. and you need it to be a four-seater truck, you know, yeah, like yeah. Uh, just get in the back. And uh, at like when they park, R2-D2 kind of just shimmies and it falls off and like C-3PO's there to kind of catch him. That's it's such great. a good little... So weird. Yeah, it's so weird. Uh, when they pull into town, Obi and uh, Obi Wan and Luke get stopped by the stormtroopers, and Obi gives Obi Wan gives us a taste of the old Jedi mind trick or JMT from now on. When pressed for the identification, uh, for their identification, Obi Wan responds by waving his. He's, he's you don't need to see his identification. These are not the droids you're looking for. And, the, and he's like, these aren't the droids we're looking for. And Luke's like, dude, that was dope. I am sold on this for shit. Do you know how much free stuff I can get from 7-Eleven if I could just wave my mind? Fuck and he tells him, baby. he said, the force is strong, influence over the weak-minded. Uh, lucky for them, 
too, because Obi Wan's not afraid to cut a motherfucker uh, if, they, if they get <laughs> in his way, which we see in the next scene. They do not they fuck the, around in that fucking cantina. Into the cantina, man. Uh, <laughs> and it's here that we really get once they enter the cantina. What's cool about this scene is, is we really get the wide range of alien creatures in the Star Wars universe, mm. which is really really cool. Uh, we get all sorts of creatures like uh, the Greedo creature, uh, Balchin. Butthead and the devil, Beelzebub. Yeah. yeah. We just yeah. get a yeah. shot of him. So, uh, needing more aliens for the cantina scene, Lucas asked makeup master Rick Baker to use off the shelf monster masks to fill in the crowd. That's really cool. Fun fact about that his daughter, my friend, yeah. Veronica Baker, uh, yeah. who we, we uh, hung out many Rick times. Ba- Rick Baker's like. And I'll never forget, we were just talking. She's like, yeah, yeah, no, my dad, like, that's what he does. Uh, you should follow her, Veronica Baker, on Instagram because every Halloween, she has the greatest costumes because her dad makes them. I <laughs> shit. Between her and Chloe, because Chloe's dad is the worked on the effects. Special right? effects. Yeah, stuff, yeah. That's been one of my one of my complaints. Like even as a kid, was watching these cantina scenes, watching a lot of these scenes uh, where it's just a lot of alien races. Is where there's always like just one of each. And that I was kind of like, it's like, you don't think there'd be like three of that one? And maybe like you wouldn't go with your that. homies? Yeah, like, <laughs> exactly. Andy, we're both humanoids. Let's go have exactly. a beer. Now, the only, the only time you do see one, uh, I, I believe you see more, uh, m- multiple is like, not necessarily multiples, but it's like the same Greedo creature is seen walking in the background yeah. a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's like the only one that we see like a duplicate of where everybody else is just like, oh, there's just one of each person here. We I- can't move on. Without we talk about John Williams' score being as amazing as it is. <laughs> what a perfect, perfect world building moment there, where it's just like, yeah, no. Which you know, is, and the music stops, and the arms on the ground, and they're just like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah so I, lo- I mean, I love this whole it's scene. Such a right? cool like old western feel. Of, like it's weird though. I mean, and, and it's, it's hard to yeah. critique this movie for like not fitting with the lore that we end up learning later. But it's like. You'd think that these motherfuckers would freak out a bit more if there was a goddamn Jedi in the the building. Yeah, but they, really, they wouldn't know yeah. it, really what it is. Or also, what like someone just having wouldn't a lightsaber they? doesn't necessarily mean they're a Jedi. Yeah. Like I feel like paper. that's probably like stuff that like cool people want, have that like, like an antique. Oh, I know how to use this lightsaber. Look at this it's dude like, in those robes with that thing. Yeah, but but to be fair, they didn't establish that those robes were synonymous with Jedi until the prequels. In this, in this world, those robes are synonymous with living in a desert planet, which was, I think, the original the original costume design was because they're on an arid planet that's hot, so you wear the robes like they would wear in like the, if you were to go to like the deserts of Morocco yeah. now. Mm-hmm. Like you know how when you see people riding camels or like an Arabic culture, they have they're covered up mm-hmm. to shelter them from the harsh rays of the sun. I think that's what they originally intended. It wasn't until the prequels where Lucas got the idea like all Jedi knights should dress. Like these like, fucking weird, like they're in desert priests, or yeah. Because like yeah. if you notice, by the end of the, the original trilogy, Luke is dressed in just dope ass black here. He doesn't oh, wear the robes. Yeah. In fact, I don't think he ever wears the robes Dude, in any of this, and he considers no, himself no. a Jedi Knight. When I used to go to church all the time, I was like an acolyte, and I would like have to go and walk like with the pastor, That's a cool like name. as church started, and I would like go uh, light the candles or whatever. But I always had like the cool ass robe. With the uh, the the candle lighter and it was like this tall, yeah, you know, it and it had the and I was just like, man, I feel like I'm magical right yeah. now, you know. I have the, ma- the <laughs> magic of God, acolyte. you know. Yeah, it's so I mean, cool. yeah, it's interesting because they're like, because because the idea of the Jedi Knight, Jesus. Right, you, you still back there? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, <laughs> it's like that. It's like a, a living. It's like a living star destroyer. It just kept going. Uh, of course, we get the great interaction where he tries to order a beer and he bumps to the guy. The guy's like, my friend doesn't like you. I don't like you either. And it looks like, dude, I'll be careful. He's well, like, hey, you'll man. be dead. And then the guy's like, I'm one on like eight solar systems. I'm a bad motherfucker. <laughs> and then Obi-Wan doesn't skip a beat. just cuts his arm off. Well, and what's, all of this is crazy because it's just like, if I was Luke, I'd be so scared. I'd be oh, terrified. my God. <laughs> Of all of them, but face cuts, hand is cuts his arm off. Right. And by the way, it's worth noting that the arm bleeds in this, which yeah. is hilarious because they didn't really establish that the lightsabers cauterize things until a little bit later. Uh, actually, I think what like oh, it does. It didn't establish that until it cauterizes his hand later. Mm. And it's we, weird because we like it. when you see the shot of the arm, like the arm itself looks hollow. Yeah, like, you no look bone. at the end. Of, there's like nothing in there. It's like oh, okay. Yeah. Lightsabers suck up all the blood and muscle. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Absolutely. Gotcha. Uh, let's move on before someone freaks out. As what he says, he's like I got this dude Chewbacca he's the first mate on a ship uh, that can get us to Alderaan let's go chat with uh, with the captain who happens to be the, the one and only Han lock up your fucking daughter Solo 
Holy shit, Harrison Ford looked good in this. Uh, just like an extra little bit of long hair. Dude. You know, it's like he just def- the unruly he hair. He just totally reminds me of like, you know what I like about high school girls? They stay the uh, same age. <laughs> like, he remi- he's just that guy. I get older, they stay yeah, the same He's age. that guy. Uh, he dude. really is. He's so <laughs> expressive with his face. He's great in this. Both sides of his face. I don't know how he does it. He can smirk. Different. With both well, sides that to one mean photo. different things. You see that yeah, one photo? Yeah. Yeah. He just he is the first he is the person that just he just embodies the rogue. Yeah. You know, he's a rogue. Yeah. He's such a good guy. Uh so Captain cool. of the Millennium Falcon, of course. Uh he's like I can take you to Alderaan and, and, and Obi Wan's like only if it's a fast ship, and he goes, Fast ship. This is the ship that did the Kessel run in less than twelve parsecs. Fast ship, old man. Wow, he's okay. walking now. Yeah, there was. There was a, <laughs> a sky walking. Uh, and he's like, I'll, I'll do it for a bunch of money. He's like, well, we'll pay you 2K right now plus 15K. We'll reach Alderaan. And he goes, deal, cool. And then stormtroopers enter and Obi-Wan are like, we got to bounce. So we should get out of here, uh, leaving Han to have a little chat with his old buddy Greedo. And Greedo's like, Unta Gunta Solo. Are you going somewhere? Because uh, you owe some money. To Java. Me to Java no pasta, Slimo. We'll get to that later. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus. God, I want to make someone want to beat myself over the head with his mic. Uh, Greedo plays hardball. He wants to ice Han to collect the bounty, but Han uh, doesn't give him the chance because, and this will always be the way I remember this, he shoots first. Just blasts him right out of the table. And uh, ask, uh, uh, don't worry about the fact that Greedo shot as well. Han is cold as ice. We don't care yeah. about that. Uh, back on the Death Star, Vader can't manage to break Leia, so they decide on an alternative course of persuasion, and they set a course to Alderaan back on Tatooine. Stormtroopers are everywhere. Uh, Luke sells his land speeder for a pittance. Uh, while an Imperial spy watches after the sale, they head to the hangar uh, to meet up with Han and Chewie and Jabba the Hutt, which wasn't in the original for good reason. We're not even going to talk about that, because we don't need this shit. Uh, we don't need to know why Han owes Jabba money. We just know that he owes And then money. at the end of the scene, him going, Han, or uh, Jabba, you're a great human being. Uh, well, <laughs> so he says you're a great human being, but he also says he. Th- this was the line of dialogue that was mirrored, where he goes, he tells Greedo because Greedo's like, you owe him money, and he goes, it's not my fault. People get boarded sometimes. Yeah, like, it's mm. you can't have a hundred percent. And then he says it again to Jabba. He mir- he, he yeah. it's redundant. It was stupid. They and, uh, didn't they like out. also leave this out because they didn't know what they wanted Jabba to look like at well, this point? They thought he was going to look like a human being. No, I thought they just which didn't. is why he, he says you're a wonderful human being. Actually, what? He looks like Peter Pettigrew. He does. No, but uh, uh, no. Have I, you seen the video? I yeah. thought that he legitimately does. I thought huh. the story was that like they had a plan, but they didn't have a final costume yet. Uh, so the guy that filled in knew that he wasn't gonna be Jabba, right. but he still acted the fuck out of it. He's huh. he had like this Irish accent. He's like he was really good, but huh. like he knew that he wasn't gonna be Jabba. Yeah, we don't need to necessarily know the full details. We just need to know that Han is desperate enough to go on this risky mission. Uh, but we do get to see Boba Fett. In this scene, which is dope. A little quick look. It's a little, it's a little quick look, and he gives a little nod to the camera. Like, yeah, I'm yeah. going to be the one everyone likes because my shit is dope. Luke and Obi get to the hangar uh, with a spy in tow, and they see the Falcon for the first time. And he's like, what a piece of junk. Uh, and then Han goes, she may not look it like it, but she's got it where it counts. That's what I'm talking about. The spy calls in the stormtroopers, and they come in blasting. Han doesn't skip a beat, man. He whips out that heavy blaster and just starts breaking loose. Fucking go. Just breaking people off some. Uh, Runner cool Bordy screams his first make. Chewie, get us out of here. They bounce out of the space. Uh, out to space and run into a bunch of Imperial cruisers. Uh, Chewie takes evasion maneuvers while Han prepares to, uh, for the jump to light speed. Luke tries to touch one of his little flashy buttons and Han like slaps him away. He's like, just go strap yourself into the back, kid. Uh, and with the pull of a lever, we see it for the first time, the jump to light speed. And this movie gets, gets cool. better. How? Could you imagine sitting in the theater and seeing that for the first time? You're like, well, that's, fu- okay. This is a concept I have no <laughs> prior like knowledge so to. This cool. is insane. So cool. Now we see it all the time, of course. Yeah. Uh, back in the Death Star, Tarkin and Vader bring Leia to the bridge. Uh, and she's British all of a sudden, which is crazy. They tortured her British. I recognize <laughs> your foul stench when I was brought on board. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's have some Neon Crumpets. Um, she talked about that later, where they were like, why did you get British all of a sudden? And she goes, I didn't mean to do it, but these lines were so ridiculous that you almost have to say them with a British accent, like a Shakespearean, yeah. Uh, Tarkin tells her they're about to test the Death Star for the first time on her home planet at Alderaan, unless she gives them another target, uh, which is the Rebel base. Reluctantly, she sells out her entire rebellion and tells Tarkin the, rebellion, the, the Rebels are held up on Dantooine. Uh, and then Tarkin goes, see Lord Vader? She can be reasonable. And then, unfortunately, Dantooine is too remote uh, of a planet to make an effective demonstration, so we're going to go ahead and blow your planet up anyway. And she's like, no. And then on his order, the cannon on the Death Star uh, lights up and just blows that planet so to smithereens. So fucking cool. Back on the Falcon, Luke is deep in his Jedi training when a sudden disturbance in the forest causes Obi-Wan to sit like he's actually knocked off his feet. And he says, it's as if millions of voices suddenly cried out in terror and were suddenly silenced. Jesus. 
I want I want to give a shout out again to the visual language of the Death Star's laser. The all four of the, the beams, them, coming, the together. beams coming together, before, converging. What the fuck? So, cool. but even before that, showing the like, I I don't know if it was like whatever they were in the control thing where they turn it on and you see the beam yeah. shoot Those out. Those guys are just cancer. Like, for sure, yeah, just, you know they yeah. like they're like, is this healthy? Don't worry about it, man. Or they'll fucking go they'll make you go out like Rob did. Uh, Obi Wan tells him to continue his training. Luke tries to uh, deflect a blast from the spherical droid, but fails. Han uh, uh, talks shit about the Force not being real, so Obi Wan pulls a helmet with a blast shield down and tells him to try again. Uh, also noteworthy, we get the coolest chess game ever made. Which is like the I, there's a name for it. I can't remember what it's called, but they're playing that chessboard, which is cool. You can play it at a hollow chess. Hollow yeah, chess. That was called. That's what it's. Oh no, you uh, can't play it, but you can just pose in front of it at a galaxy's edge. Galaxy's galaxy's edge. That's cool. Uh, stretch out with your feelings. Go with your instincts. Uh, he does so, and he gets boom, boom, boom. With three in a row deflected, and Han calls it luck. And then Obi Wan's like, "In my experience, there's no such thing as luck." Back on the Death Star, Tarkin and Vader get a report uh, that the base on Dantooine has been deserted for some time. Leia lied. Uh, go kill her ass. Leia. Wow, nice. <laughs> Princess Leia, Princess Leia. A couple of people pronounced her name very weird. Oh, God, yeah. the guy at the end calls her Leah. Yeah. yeah. And it's just like, do you not Tarkin know? Tarkin does at one point, too. Yeah. Does he? Yeah. Have that's they not, not decided? That's not how you pronounce it, Tarkin. <laughs> like, it's like the whole it's like, Han it's like a thing. thing. Like yeah. when uh, What's His Face comes in the next movie, he's like, Han. And also, yeah. And also and in, in Blink 182 song, A New Hope. He, I, uh, I just want to be like Han. I forgot what the lyric is, but yeah. it says Han. Uh, the Falcon Sweet. arrives at Alderaan only to find it in pieces. They get attacked by a TIE fighter, uh, and then they uh, uh, they go to go after it, but then stop. Excuse me. To, they go after to stop it from uh, transmitting their position, but then they start wondering, TIE, TIE fighters don't have hyperdrives. What's it doing all the way out here in deep space by itself? They follow it toward a moon, only to realize that that's, that's no, no moon. moon. It's a space station. And this is where... <sighs> The movie wow. gets cooler. This is where this is where Harrison Ford really sells this, right? Because yeah. you get this look of like I'm gonna go kill, like I'm gonna leap in without thinking, right? And then you get the classic Harrison Ford, which you see in Indiana Jones too, which is like I'm just gonna jump off the ship. Oh shit, we're already in too deep. And he's like, because he goes turn the ship around. He goes, yeah, like, yeah, that's a good idea. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I think we should do it. It's like yeah. I'm gonna drop the Full ego reverse. here. Let's get the fuck out but of I, here. But I also like just before they even discover that it's not a moon or whatever. I love the line that. A, a TIE fighter shouldn't be this far out in deep space yeah. on its own. Like, mm. just that concept alone is so cool. That's yeah. just such a universe Why building thing there? of like, yeah, they always have to stay around a big, like, frigate sort of ship. They're never just kind of like this far out. I love that. Yeah, line. they're fighters, not. Yeah. yeah. But the TIE, so but, cool. but X Wings have hyperdrives, right? Yes. Okay. But TIE fighters don't. Uh, before Han can reverse, Han can reverse, excuse me, they get caught in a tractor beam, which sucks them into Bay 327. Not sure if 327 has a uh, any meaning or not, but I put that down there. Tarkin and Vader Is it like head- Pixar's number or whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tarkin and Vader head down to the bay where uh, there's no one aboard. Vader orders a full scan of the ship. He senses something, a presence he has not felt since. He just walks, walks out. away. I'm like, so since what? Weird. So since cool. what? What do you think it was? <laughs> since last time he went to Burger King? He just disappeared. Where'd he go? Yeah, where'd he go? <laughs> he does that sometimes, man. Just be cool or he's going to choke the shit out of you. I mean, since, is since Mus- M- Mustafar? Mustafar. Right? Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. Uh, but he's the, not going to say that. That's no, when he got no, all no. his limbs ca- cut yeah, off. He's like, that was not a good day for yeah, me. Yeah, no, that, that day was a bad day. <laughs> we call that a bad day. Yeah. Once the coast is clear, uh, Luke and the gang pop out of the smuggler's, compar- uh, smuggler's compartment uh, and hatch a plan. Obi-Wan's going to go take care of whatever's causing this tractor beam while the rest of the gang uh, jack some stormtroopers for their armor. They head to the control room so R2 can hack into the mainframe and find where the tractor beam controls are. Uh, spotting them, Obi-Wan heads out on, or, or, excuse me, Obi-Wan heads out on his own. Before uh, leaving, he tells Luke to stay put. He has to get uh, the droids. He has to get this droid to the rebellion. The force will be with you always, he says to him. Those are the last words to him. Uh, R2 finds out where they're, that they're actually holding, uh, holding Leia, and he freaks out. He's like, oh, my God, she's here. She's here. Uh, she's down on uh, level five, detention block AA-23, but she's scheduled to be terminated. And Han's like, let her die, man. I don't know who this woman is. Who cares? She means nothing to me. Don't get any funny ideas. And he's not going anywhere until uh, Luke says the magic word. She's rich. She got that money. She's a rich my princess. Money. So you better go get it. And she'll... And she'll if you rescue her, the reward will be beyond what you can imagine. To which Han Solo goes, I can imagine a lot, bro. Like, what are that's we talking about? That's a great yeah. response. Uh, Luke grabs some cuffs, and they head off to the detention center, leaving C-3PO and R2 behind. Vader skulks around downstairs looking for Obi-Wan. Down in the detention block, the warden calls bullshit. And Han gets in there, and the warden calls bullshit. So Han and Luke light everyone up, just murder everyone. <laughs> Just kill them all, including all the like the light fixtures and the light switches, that which was, you assume would long. 
that. I hated, a lot of shots. I hated the attention some of, of them, that. Some of them were clearly cameras. Yeah. Like the ones with like the six panels, I think were cameras. Yeah. But a bunch of them just looked like wall fixtures. Yeah. I was this, like, this why are you bit... killing all the sconces, bro? <laughs> it felt like action for action's sake. Like it felt like it's been too long since like things have happened. Yeah. Mm. It just reminds me of something that like a family guy or a robot chicken would parody and show like a million over of different over. things getting shot. Because it was the same shot too. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't like they had different angles on it. It just, they just kept cutting back to that six grid thing. Yeah. yeah. Just getting blasted and that little jewel black thing getting blasted. <laughs> You're like, why? Yeah. I originally I thought, oh maybe they're like gun turrets or something. But yeah, they, they must weren't. have been security. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Real, anyway, real, real uh, quick, uh they I don't know if you pointed this out. They talk about cell block one one three eight. Which is a reference to Lucas's first film, T H T H X one one three eight. Oh, cool! Uh, I did not point that out. Thank you for doing it. Uh, of course, uh, someone comes over the comm, and Han's like, "Oh, I gotta take this under control." So he goes over the comm and says, "Everything is under control. Situation normal. Had a slight weapons malfunction, but everything is perfectly all right now. We're fine. We're all fine here. Thank you. How are you? This scene, I love. <laughs> like, I love that scene so much. <laughs> this, How are you? <laughs> How are you? <laughs> this scene, uh, like the comedy from this scene, so, is something that could be in a movie today and be equally as funny. It's like great. it's it's so weird that that sort of style of comedy that. It's so out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. The rest of the movie has nothing like it, mm. and it's just it, it, it's, it's, so it's Harrison unique. Ford's <laughs> ability to, to to quickly jump suave. between suave and fish out of water. Yeah, where he just skates that line of like he's competent up until a point, but he always bites off more than he can chew, and then he has to dial it <laughs> back. And what does he do? Of course, the guy's like, "What's your operational number?" He's, and he blasts the console, and he goes, "Boring conversation." Anyway, <laughs> Luke, we're gonna have company. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. I, I don't the have. How are you? Is so funny. He's so and, great. And, and the face he makes after, like, fuck, why did I see that? Yeah. Uh, of course, Luke runs over and opens up Leia's cell, and she just immediately insults Talking how shit, short dude. he is. He'll which never again, find love. And then, of course, she we all we know that she inevitably <laughs> falls in love with the six foot Taller. one Harrison Ford, thus proving my point. Taller. Thank God all she movies didn't that I fall love, in love with her brother. Yeah, that would be a little bit gross. But all movies I love reward 20. people who are tall with love. Mm -hmm. That's how it is. I just want Luke That's to pull out the helmet. You want to get saved or not? Like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to be just like... Okay, uh, up in the comments room, Vader tells Tarkin that Obi-Wan uh, is there. Vader must face him alone. Reinforcements hit the detention block with a vengeance, forcing Han, Luke, and Leia... Or, excuse me, uh, forcing... Oh, excuse me, Han's vengeance. Forcing. Han, Luke, and Leia are cut off from the escape route. There's only one way in, one way out. Uh, and then Leia gives them a shit. She's like, this is some rescue. Uh, when you came in here, did you have a plan for getting out? And they're like, no. And she's like, well, okay, give me that fucking blaster because I'm going to get us Dude, out of here. Dude, this I love scene this. is so good because this is really like, look at this person taking charge and owning the situation where these two idiots are like, we didn't think that far ahead. These bumbling <laughs> <Yeah>. fools. <laughs> well, this, and this is what's cool. Like, and to their credit of, of Lucas when he wrote this character, he didn't write her as the dumb fem, like the, the dumb damsel in distress. The princess in distress. Yeah, the, like, oh, the princess in distress. This is such an important character moment for Leia. Because this separates her from any from from just those those stupid stereotypical roles that women were given pretty much throughout the seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousands, and probably still today. Yeah, which is that <laughs> she looks at the two guys, the two ma like macho, especially the macho guy, and goes, "Did you have a plan to get me out of here?" And they're like, "No, we don't know." She goes, "Motherfucker!" Takes the blaster out of his hand and blasts and finds her own route out of there, and then Stop. jumps in first. She's like, "See you later, motherfuckers!" <laughs> but also shooting down the the thing. To yeah, like also blasting yeah. a few people, right? And it's and it's great. And then Han has that that the great line where he screams back and goes, "Wonderful girl! Either I'm gonna kill her or I'm beginning to like her." Yeah, and that's a perfect way to describe her character. That's great. Uh, and then we have a moment right after where uh, what's his face won't go in it, and he's yeah, like, Chewie, "Dude, Chewie, kicks him in the ass. just jump in." <laughs> he's like, "All right, <laughs> smell." He's like, like, "I don't care smell. about the smell." Yeah, he kicks him in the ass. Uh, Luke jumps down, and then Han follows. They land in a gar uh, in a garbage dump, and Han doesn't miss a beat. He immediately gives Leia shit. He goes, "The garbage chute was a really wonderful idea. What an incredible smell you've discovered, <laughs> man! They <laughs> are going to get it on. This yeah. is the kind of stuff I like." Uh, he tries to blast it out, and Luke's like, "No, we already tried that." I'm like, "When did you try that?" Luke, in the five seconds it took you to get up, realize where you were, you immediately started blasting. That's what Han did. Yeah. I guess that's true. <laughs> uh, I'm shocked that you did not say ping pong. Ping pong. Oh, yeah. He ping, ping pong, ping pong. He <laughs> pings pong that thing all around. Uh, this is where we get like the just. This thing the, terrified me when I was a kid. Oh, me too. Yeah, but like I just like this is the the silly star. This is the boogalit scene yeah. of like this movie. You know? Really? Yeah. Oh my this god! Is terrifying. It was, was so, kid, dude. So I terrifying. In the water. Do you know what it is? Yeah. Where did it go? Is that and Luke fears? was down there for a long time. But no, it's not. The the issue I had with it, believability wise, was like, why is everybody else standing up? Like, why is that? 
one area of this thing like 40 oh, it, feet deep. It wasn't that it was deep. It's that it pulled him it down. Pulled him. It dragged him in. This, this, yeah, and this it was garbage holding snake. Him. And the, but like how deep him. was it? Like, I, uh, two feet. You, you yeah. imagine, yeah, like three feet. I, I, and probably, how big was that thing, man? <laughs> like that I mean, was that's, like a <laughs> what's crazy is like that thing then disappears and that's what sets up the like, so, wait, it's gone. Yeah, it's gone. And it's like, Why oh, it the escape. walls are yeah. about to retract. Uh, in the scene where Luke is dragged underwater by a trash compactor monster, when filming the scene, Hamill had to actually hold his breath underwater and he did it for so long that he burst a blood vessel in his face. Cool. You might be able to see the pop vessel in his left eye later in the film. Uh, that's why a lot of the shots when he's in the X-Wing later, um, like there's a lot of things covering his eye or the, the camera's always shot from one direction because you can see and his eye is just fucked. fucked. That sucks. Oh, wow. uh, of course, the room lurches with a Mark massive Hamill, clink sound and Luke pops up from the water. Uh, the thing just let him go probably because he knows what's about to come. The trash compactor starts going Squishing off. Uh, the walls begin closing in and Luke gets the bright idea to call C-3PO via his cool big chapstick. Um uh, Troops over, uh, at this point have overrun the control room, so C-3PO thinks fast and pretends to be locked in a closet so with R2. Smart. Once clear, they access a small panel down on the hangar and contact Luke via their giant chapstick. Uh, he screams at them to shut down all the garbage. Shut down all the garbage, man! Shut down the damage level! Shut down all the garbage! Shut down all the garbage! He's like, dude, chill. I can't They're about to be crushed to death. But I'd be like, bro, I understand that, but it's like it's like a 911 operator. Ma'am, calm down. You're not doing yourself any favors. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I don't know what you're saying. Where, <laughs> tell me where you're located at. He's in the house! Uh... Of course, within inches to spare, R2 comes through. Luke and the gang cheer, but C-3PO thinks those sounds are uh, the sounds of them being crushed alive, so he feigns sorrow as only an emotionless droid uh, who is trying to emulate human feelings can. No, like, you don't really dude. That, that, I think this is another fantastic moment where they're celebrating, and we have C-3PO being like, I fucked up. Yeah. They're literally getting crushed to death. He's just a I, drama that queen to me this is entire like time. Good though. comedic beat. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's a, He's a drama queen. We can all agree with that. Oh, right? dear. <laughs> oh, and R2's like, dude, fucking real. You know, you always to that friend that's like, oh my god, like what are you gonna do? You're like, bro, just relax. I hate, I just hate more relax. than anything in my life that I am the C three PO to Kevin's R two D two. It's true, hundred percent. It's I true, hate it. 100%. man. <laughs> it's your choice, Tim. <laughs> Uh, they're saved fantastic and then upstairs Obi-Wan attempts to prove that the Empire really needs to up its security standards by climbing out onto a tiny little ledge uh, where he finds the controls to the tractor beam he pulls down uh, he pulls one of the levers shutting off the tractor beam uh, as some guards pass uh, around him uh, down outside the garbage masher Leia and Han uh, kind of yell flirt at each other uh, but we know yeah, this is going to turn out great. Uh, back in the hangar, Leia catches a glimpse of the Falcon. You uh, She goes, you're getting into that thing? You're braver than I thought. This is great. <laughs> Another All the good dialogue between them beat. is so good. <laughs> and like her delivery of that line, too. You're braver than I Very thought. Very enjoyable. Uh, they round the corner and run into a patrol of stormtroopers, and Han lets, Han lets his heavy blaster do the talking, man. And then he goes, go, and runs after them. Screaming. Screaming. And then rounds a corner, and again, another perfect Han Solo vote, rounds a corner and runs into a, an entire platoon of stormtroopers. And he's like, shit. And then but shoots one. He pops one just to <laughs> let him know. What's up? Ah. Uh, and I think this was another digitally altered scene because I don't remember there being that many of them in the original cut, but I could be wrong. I mean, in the original cut, it didn't seem like a platoon. It, yeah. it seemed it like, like a lot there of was them, a lot like of, 20 them. of them, yeah. but not yeah. like they're like, there's a, like, they're yeah, a whole no, it, it yeah, They like were all chilling there. Uh, of course, meanwhile, Luke and Leia are trapped out on a landing. Uh, again, proving once again the security standards here are terrible. They, they could just fall off. It's terrifying, but they don't care about it anyway. Uh, Luke uses his Why cool did they take off their suits after they got... Oh, because I guess it smelled like trash. But still, I feel like they should have kept Put them. it back on, put things on. Decent yeah, armor, on. I guess. Uh, it, decent armor, and also you kind of look like everyone else instead of like probably a like good idea. people. Uh, meanwhile, Luke and Leia are trapped out on the land. Uh, he uses his batarang to swing across the bridge, but not before Leia gives him a little Bat smooch ring. on the cheek. <laughs> Luck. I didn't like. I didn't so, like that. I like it. I didn't like it because like, it's not like they're separating. Like she's not being like he's not gonna be like I have to battering over there and she's like good luck kiss I listen, gotta go like no good luck and yeah, I'm still with you like it's just weird. it didn't make a lot of sense to listen, me. Listen, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, you know why? Why? Because the next line we get is, <sighs> I've been waiting for you, Obi Wan. Oh, oh my God, what? we meet again at last. The circle. Is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now, I'm the motherfucking master. Yeah, you are, dude. <laughs> oh, only the master of evil, Darth. And you can also <laughs> yeah, terrible line. at this point. He's That's like stupid line. Is his first name Darth? <laughs> yeah, or is he a Darth? And we this is really another one of those out, like man. this movie alone is weird in the universe because it's like he'd call him Anakin. Like there's no yeah. way he'd he call, would call him, him Darth Anakin. Vader. Or he call him Vader. I don't know. They, you know Obi Wan. Yeah. No way. 
just to be condescending, I feel like yeah, he'd call, he call him Anakin. Anakin. Yeah, probably. I feel like he'd even call him Annie. Yeah, it's yeah, right, that's Annie? so true. You no. little bitch. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely it's, a, like a Dumbledore Voldemort. Too. Like Dumbledore calls Voldemort Tom. Like yeah. he would do oh, that. Definitely so would yeah. cool. It's like Chipper Jones, the baseball player. They always call him Larry. The New York Mets hated him, so they call him his real name, Larry, instead of his nickname, Chipper Jones. Fifty Cent <laughs> being Curtis. Yeah, oh, that's even worse. Uh, but yeah, the, I always hated that comeback. Like Darth, only a master of evil, Darth. <laughs> like. All right. I mean, what? don't come back until that? he says Darth. Only a master of evil. And him be like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I am. You see this whole black dude <laughs> like, going on? It's Thanks. dope. <laughs> my helmet, my dome is hella shiny, bro. I got this shit waxed by the fucking, by these Jawa slaves that I got over there. <laughs> but also, trying to it's win Guardian Leviosa out of here. I fucking <laughs> choke, force choke their asses back into position. But also, it's weird watching this movie in HD because you could see, like, all the brush marks on Darth's helmet. Yeah, it's pretty like, bad. <laughs> like, dude, we got it for that. Uh, they duel. And, he, and Obi-Wan tells him, you can't win, Darth. If you strike me down, I should become more powerful than you could ever possibly imagine. Holy down, fuck. Yeah. This movie gets cooler. Yeah. <laughs> down in the hangar. Luke and Leia catch up with Han and Chewie. The troops guarding the ship are distracted by something and they can't figure it out, uh, but they, they move off. When the gang makes a run for it, Luke sees what it is that is distracting them. Vader and Obi-Wan are dueling out there to the death. Uh, noticing his young apprentice watching, Obi-Wan steadies himself and inse- accepts Check the inevitable. His character is cool, but no one will ever be as cool as Darth Vader, so Vader just, he just lets him kill him. I hated the scene. I Did you? Love uh, I hated how awkward it was. I, I love I it. I hate the moment after the scene because, like, I feel like the scene is so cool. I love he, it. Turning off his sword, getting I mean, sliced. Yeah. No, he looks. It he, all drops. Yeah. And then fucking Vader Vader's walks like, over and is like, puts his little know. foot on there. Is like, what the fuck. But I have, but, I have <laughs> no problem with the meaning of it. I have no problem with what they were trying to get across to the viewer. I just hated. Two guys awkwardly standing there with a stormtrooper just standing there, like watching. Well, and you, then well, dude, this Luke is and Leia and all them yeah. like watching too. Like it just, it just all I, looked. It was composited badly. I, I guess. love this scene, and I'll tell you why for the music cue. Right, we have that moment. It gets really somber for a second, and he looks over at Luke, and Luke sees him, and then he, he shuts off his lightsaber and closes his eyes, and then gets. That cool. shit's cool. And he disappears, and Luke screams out "No!" and fucking starts blasting people. And then, and then, Vader's but then like, it plays Leia's theme, which is really weird. It, but it's Again, like again, Tim with the themes. Like, yeah, I, I, like I, that, that was yeah. the first thing I noticed with this. Where I'm like, why? Why would they do that? Because like, it's desperate. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's like it's like melancholy. It's yeah. melancholy. Yeah. 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 It's just weird. It just felt the like the guy that his like his 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 mentor has just got killed by this person he's never seen before. It's it's crazy. Also, I don't remember if like I guess it must be in the edited version he does turn his lightsaber off because in the original he definitely didn't. And like the Did shot of him uh, running his lightsaber through Obi Wan, it looks like he runs the, his lightsaber through Obi Wan's lightsaber. It was yeah, always he, really he kind of just stands there with it. Does yeah. he? Yeah. Yeah. he doesn't turn off. I don't no. think. He, yeah, no, no I, I could be wrong. Oh, he just stands there. And it, it like it's off when oh, it's it on turns the off ground. when it hits the ground. Yeah, because it goes. Yeah, I think. It, but like now, I think he turns it off. Like, I don't remember. The moment it, yeah. As he goes to slice. Where you just I don't remember, but I I agree with you, Andy, just to the extent that I feel that this scene more than any in in the movie have so many of the worst looking effects combined. There's a lot of effects. There's a lot of effects happening. Ones of him disappearing, the lightsaber turning on and off and all that, that it's like, it starts to get a little bit like chintzy. Yeah. It it was more of a, of a blocking thing for me. Yeah. Of just how awkward everybody kind of looked there. Like they were waiting for the action. I just remember (laughs) watching this when I was a kid going, what the fuck? But yeah, like you killed Obi-Wan. Like what the hell? And of course, we don't Moments he, later, you we don't, Yeah, we don't know what he meant by, if you strike me down, I'll be more powerful than you ever imagined, until Luke starts blasting him, and then he hears Obi-Wan's voice telling him to run. He says, Luke, run. Like, don't be dumb. You're not going to win this fight. And Luke's like, oh, how, how much can you see? Because like, yeah. <laughs> I got to take a shit later. You're going to be watching me do that on this And stuff? I wipe really weird. I wipe weird. I wipe back to front. I just like to wipe it into my balls. Oh, my God. They have a bomb. God damn it, Nick. No reason. No reason to escalate it. <laughs> <laughs> the joke could just sit. Like, <laughs> 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 the worst, wow, sometimes yeah. I forget people are watching. This. <laughs> they have a boy the Falcon to take off, but not before a squad of TIE fighters gives pursuit. <laughs> uh, Han and Luke jump onto the big guns as Chewie pilots, and one by one they make short work of the TIE fighters. Uh, Luke gets one of them, and Han uses that classic technique of praise, criticize, praise. He's like, great work, kid. Don't get cocky. Also, uh, she's your sister. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Anyway, uh, Han takes out the final uh, TIE fighter, and it erupts in a ball of orange, red, and a little bit of green fire. Did you notice that? Yeah. Just like Warboat. Burn blue. Burn blue, dude. There it is. uh, In one of these, like... 
it's interesting even having this release version i guess the 90s vhs release this the special edition where you could see the tie fighter flying by and you see the red square of alpha yeah, that yeah, it's yeah, still yeah, on yeah, i used to see that uh like everything else looks fine but it's just that one that, shot yeah. yeah you could still see it like on its like little slide or whatever the hell they call it back in the olden times of special effects which I don't know what they were. It's not a visual effect. Yeah, I don't know when, how did, they used when did to do that. when did they they re-release this with these effects in there? Ninety uh, seven. Yeah, it was okay. like building up to episode one. Episode one. Mm. Yeah. yeah, but did, did you see that on the four K transfer? Or did they clean it up? Because back in the day, you'd see what Annie's talking There's about. There's a ton of stuff mad. you see the the weird. Yeah. Like just like the outline. square that it's around that they're making it. Yeah, because like they would. I space. think they shot it on green, but they had to like chemically remove the green, and it was never perfect. Yeah, it's just cool. I, did, I have so no cool. idea how they used to do those techniques. But I love, I'd love to see it because like they, they did that. Bef- like, and I know we make a lot of old jokes, but I am fucking old. They did that three Lower. years before I was born. Yeah, which means it really was probably four years before I was born because it came out in seventy seven. Right? Think Crazy, about that. Man. That was when people were still wearing bell bottoms and smoking weed. And, John, and John Travolta was yeah. Oh, was, I got a strut. Saint la, Saint I got a strut. La. I feel like strut. Yeah, my dad was like two. It's crazy. Y'all are old. He's so much back. Uh, back on the bridge. Uh, Is that right? My, my dad. Yeah, my dad was born seventy five. Or is your dad oh, just dude, young? So old. <laughs> yeah, or it, my, yeah my parents were both twenty when they had me. So yeah, yeah they're just young parents. That's fair. I could be your dad probably. Back uh, on the bridge. I'd rather not. You can call me daddy. Uh, back on the bridge. Oh, no. Tarkin <laughs> asks Vader if he's sure the tracking device they placed aboard the ship will work, and, and Vader's like, Yeah, that's just gonna lead us right to the rebel base. And then on the Falcon, we get a weird moment where Princess Leia's like, That was really easy. I bet they're tracking us. And Han's like, No. And then they just don't like. They never think about it again. Don't they? Don't they cut back to uh, Vader and uh, Tarkin? Tarkin being like, uh, yeah, "We're tracking him." Yeah, that's <laughs> what I just said. They were like, they were literally. Like, he was Tarkin's like, "I hope the tractor." He's like, "That tractor that we put on a, a tracker better work." And Vader's like, "It's gonna work, dude." And then Leia literally goes, "That was too easy. They must be tracking us." And Han's like, "No way." And everyone's like, "Hey, oh, you're right, Han." You're right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, the rebellion is never like, "Oh, maybe we should like scan it for any like kind of yeah, tracker, maybe or maybe go somewhere else first. Yeah, go yeah. somewhere else first and see yeah. what happens." Yeah, uh, I guess it's interesting. They don't know that they're about to get blasted. They have no idea. Like we have the ticking well, clock that like, they also of weren't action. about to get blasted. Like, had they gone somewhere else? Well, no. He's saying once they get to Yavin, yeah, they didn't realize that they were that the Death Star was going to come there until it's there, and then they have thirty minutes to evacuate the base. But Do I they guess know that though, instead of, I, don't, I don't think they, they know, know how long it takes to track. They but also they know don't evacuate they, the base. Yeah, they, they never stay there. Yeah, like, so. I don't even think they know yeah. they're going to get blasted. Well, they know not to evacuate the base because we know what happens when you evacuate a base with the Empire out in space. You get a really long, slow chase. Uh, Luke and Han, uh, let's see, they, they land on Yavin 4, and a cop with a radar gun checks their speed as they land just to make sure that everything's, they don't have to give them a ticket. I never knew what that guy was doing. He's just like, oh, 48 miles an hour. They're well within <laughs> the speed sick. limit. That's a cool shot, though. It's pretty cool. Yeah. And we get that again, by the way, in, I want to say Rogue One. Yeah. Maybe it's like an identifier or something. I don't know. I don't yeah, but so. I, but that guy, how did that guy get up there? How did he get there's, up there? There's probably a little ladder, a little ladder, a little, little tiny, side of the pole. unsafe ladder. Oh, for nobody sure. cares about it's anyone's cool. safety yeah. in this world. Uh, word gets back to Tarkin that the Falcon has landed on Yavin Four, and they've detected a big old base. Uh, <laughs> they're taking up position now on Yavin Four. The rebels, including Han, Luke, and Han, are getting a mission briefing by a guy who can't pronounce Leia to save his fucking life. He's like, Princess Leia has done a lot of things here. Uh, the yeah. death. The Death Star has a critical flaw, it turns out, and a small, uh, let's see, if a small fighter can maneuver down a dangerous trench, it can drop a bomb down a two meter uh, wide thermal exhaust port, which will start a chain reaction that can blow this whole thing to smithereens. One of the pilots scoffs, he's like, that's impossible, even with a computer, but Luke shows him, because he's like, I used to just <laughs> shoot bullseye womp rats in my T-16 back home, at which point every pilot in the room is like, what the fuck are you talking and about? who are you? <laughs> and who are you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why are womp rats so fucking big? Yeah. Two also, meters? Yeah, what nightmare like hellscape did you right? That's big, right? Yeah. Yeah. I thought the same thing. Like I was that, like, shut the, I would be like, shut the like, fuck up. I've been kid. here for fucking eight years, yeah. bro. Like yeah. <laughs> I don't have a life. <laughs> I live in a cot out back in my X Wing. For <laughs> so long, X-wing. for so long, I felt like this exhaust port was such a like, why would anyone design a ship so poorly? Know, it's cool that Gary. Somebody made it problem. right. Somebody if Gary could have just gone back and solved all the problems with the Clone Wars, uh, whether or not R2 knew Obi-Wan ahead of time, hey, give him time. why the names are the same, even I though... I blame him entirely. Yeah, he'll figure it out. Uh, down in the hangar, Luke gives Han shit for leaving. Han has to go repay his debt, and he goes, what? And he goes like, what's the war... What's... What's... What... Excuse me. 
What good's a reward if you aren't around to use it? Well, take care of yourself then, Han. I guess that's what you're best at anyway, isn't it? And Han's like, I don't fucking know. Can we spend a half a day together? Yeah. Fuck off. <laughs> okay. And also, stop flexing in front of the other pilots, right? They're all talking shit behind your back. Yeah. Just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you know. They don't oh, like man. you. They don't like you. Uh, C-3PO has a touching moment as well. Uh, and he tells Archie, you've got to come back alive. You wouldn't want my life getting boring now, would you? And it's very, very nice. Um, as they take off, Luke once again oh, hears Obi-Wan's voice. Luke the force will be with you uh the death star approaches and we get the ticking clock estimated time fi to firing range 15 minutes uh we get another needless uh cgi scene of all the x-wings back together which tim already clarified could have looked cool if they just left the way it was and then they start calling in red one standing by oh, so dumb. gold one oh standing God. by god damn we're and ready then, for action again another moment of this movie getting cool and then just getting cooler we've seen the x-wings and it's yeah. like that design oh, is that's cool awesome and then it's like go into fighter position god. oh shit so George so Lucas, a cool. uh, little fact, uh, is one of the, um, they, they, they watched a bunch of the old World War II footage yeah. of dogfights for inspiration for the space stuff. It's dope. It's cool. What uh, ship opened up like that? No, no, no. no know, for the I way they That's what I thought he was going to say, yeah. too. I was like, and the bombers, it's weird. They, they're <laughs> uh, do, you think and, I, do you think when Luke was like going to say his call sign, he was really worried that he was going to forget what it was? Because like he's new to this. No, because it doesn't matter what he says. They're all going to be like, oh, the Womp Rat's calling in. <laughs> 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 Fucking idiot. We got Womp Rat mouth. Kid back there. <laughs> uh, they approach the Death Star and accelerate to attack speed. As they cut down the trench, the turbo lasers on the surface of the Death Star let loose. And I didn't know what those are called until the guy's like, they're avoiding the turbo lasers. And I was like... <laughs> what a <laughs> lame. <laughs> I was like, somebody... Some cool. Some, <laughs> some, some, some like branding marketing guy, the turbo laser like manufacturer was like, what if we called them turbo lasers? Instead of like blaster cannons, the guy's like, I like where your head turbo laser. And then they looked and they were like, name. Can we get turbolasers.com? The guy's like, yeah, you Get it. And then your whole company's named after that. I, uh, I love that there, there's also like a, <laughs> so a throwaway line they throw in there where it's like, The ships are too small for the turbo lasers. Yeah. And it's just like, Oh, I, yes. I love it. Yeah. But it's cool because they're like, They're too small, so we can't shoot them down. Thankfully, Vader has a solution to launch the TIE fighters. And then Porkins just immediately dies. Wait, Porkins dies. Wasn't that Revenge of the Sith? No, that's the or, I'm sorry, not Revenge of the Sith. Um, I think Porkins dies here. Porkins, yeah, Porkins. Porkins, Porkins dies here? Like, Porkins yeah. I thought fucking it was eats it in this one. Poor no, Porkins. it is. <laughs> Dude, fucking poor Porkins, right? Uh, Vader so grabs cool, two dude. dope ass looking pilots and they all hop in uh, TIE Fighters together. Vader's, I believe, is called the TIE Fighter Advanced. Is that right? Uh, it's cool. It's I just think doper. Because yeah. they're like, you want to hop in this perfectly normal TIE Fighter? And he's like, no. And it bro. does have a, a hyperdrive. I assume so because the normal ones don't even zone. have cup holders, bro. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> what I see here, it's called the TIE Advance X1. That's cool as fuck. That's, That's really so cool. Uh, let's see. The first just squad the, of. Just put an X or a Z in front of a ship and yep. it's cool. The first squad of Y Wings uh, make the trench run, but Vader's squad make short work of them. Stay on target. Stay on target. Blah, oh, adios, motherfuckers. Uh, three minutes to go time, baby. <laughs> uh, maybe it's time to get everyone off the base. Nah, let's just keep them all there. Uh, another squad makes a run. The leader gets, uh, gets a shot off, but it misses this time. He tries to shoot the little thing down the thermal port and misses because he's dumb. Uh, it's Luke's turn. Everyone is dead but him, Biggs and Wedge. Uh, let's see. Uh, everyone is dead but him, Biggs and Wedge. Uh, they're going in full throttle. And Biggs goes, look at that speed. You won't be able to pull out in time. Hot. And Luke goes, it's just like Beggar's Canyon back home. And he goes, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> this is What serious. is Beggar's Canyon? Like, stop. <laughs> well, they, to, they would know, though. Yeah, yeah, Biggs, uh, I guess Biggs would know. Yeah. Wedge uh, wouldn't, though. Was Wedge from? No, yeah. yeah Wedge, I don't think no, Wedge was. He knew but, Wedge. Yeah, the, Did he? Yeah, no, they didn't know each other. Yeah. Okay. We, Wedge, is, is Wedge the one that gets shot and then, like, Bounces out. Bounces He's out. Like, I gotta go. Yeah. yeah. So Biggs so dies. Then, yeah, Biggs dies. And I, it's such little things where yeah. it's like, it doesn't matter. But there's enough dialogue mm -hmm. in this movie yeah. that builds up. They were friends. Yep. And now he's dead. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they dive into the trench with Vader and his boys on their tail. Uh, Wedge gets his ass bounced out and bails out. Uh, Vader's squad closes in. They blow the hell out of Biggs, unfortunately. They just blow his ass up, just like Beggar's Canyon back home. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> just to correct ourselves, uh, Wedge... Uh, wasn't from Tatooine, so that is still Meaning a good point. Meaning if you point. trust DJ Kanzo. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Luke no, is on his own. He locks his target computer until he hears Obi-Wan once again speak to him. He says, uh, he says, Luke, use the Force. Trust me. And Luke's like, all right, ghost. Ghost dad. <laughs> I'm just going to shut that thing off. It just <laughs> shuts Luke off. Fucking moves just it moves away. it away. And then to which and everyone, so everyone at the base is like, the what out. is this womp rat kid doing? <laughs> Why did we trust him on this? <laughs> he just... 
<laughs> it veers off. Just, oh explodes. man, I fucked that up. Uh, Luke switches off his target system. Uh, let's see. They commence. Oh, the Death Star is finally in position. They commence firing a sequence. Vader gets a lock on Luke, but before he does, Han Solo and Millennium Falcon come back flying out of the fucking sun to save Luke's ass one more time. He blasts the, star, the TIE fighter right next to Vader, which bounces him out into the cosmos in like a All tailspin. of it so satisfying. Han coming back, fucking rad. Vader's exit of this weird. movie. Whoa. Weird, yeah. It's weird. But also the ADR that happens right before Vader's, sh- like when the, the ship next to him like gets spun out and hits Vader's ship. Watch out! <laughs> yeah, there and there was no like, reason why? for him to spin out because he like no, it shot the corner of uh no the 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 ship that hits Vader doesn't get shot at all. Yeah, it's it does. weird. On the, the, yeah. like, it's, it's, the it's, original, it's one, all weird. But we get that Vader gets spun out into the cosmos and has to has to readjust himself uh, twice. By the way, yeah, and they show ha- like the same shot like, like, <laughs> later on. <laughs> Han, of course, has cleared the way. He screams, "You're all clear, kid. Now let's blow this thing and go home." Just like Beggar's Canyon. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, Luke pulls the trigger, and, <laughs> and then he looks at Chewie. He's like, "I don't fucking." Know. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'm trying to speak the kid's language. Uh, Luke, Luke pulls the trigger and hits the target oh spot God. on. That shot's so good. <laughs> Him shooting them, going. The Death Star explodes but like how? a just a st- just a stack of illegal fireworks. Man, this effect could have been better. Yeah, this could have been a lot better. It's it's so instantaneous. It's, yeah. Like, yeah, it's not I, I what I remember do, it being. Do, 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 do. It's just a really? small explosion like, in a room. What's the ring from? They put that in. Uh, yeah, that's the CG effect. So okay, back, this doesn't have that. No. Uh, so the ring, the ring originally, they were like this explosion of this giant thing the size of a moon, probably would be, have been bigger than just a little firework effect. So they yeah. put that ring in later. Mm-hmm. What it really should have been was like a a concussion of like internal explosions first leading to like a, a massive explosion but they just couldn't do it at the time but you gotta imagine still in 77 that must have been cool as fuck I mean this whole thing there. is cool yeah. but I just I still would have rather preferred like the modern way like like yeah, explosions yeah. everywhere and then yeah. a big thing but oh, it was just course. like even, even in one Bice. frame of one <laughs> even in Return of the Jedi they do that where yeah. it's like the slow build up to the well yeah because they have to get them off the ship yeah. I also I also <laughs> like like this is they kind of time. this yeah. has not a whole lot to do with it but I do like when scientists kind of break down these scenes and they're like yeah, the, it's, you know, all this is done for the camera, but, like, there's no right way up. But, like, all these ships are just yeah. kind of the right yeah. way facing up. Well, the, you, really notice like, that, you notice that in, down, in like, the prequels, yeah. in the prequels they didn't do that, though. In the prequels, they're flying, <clears throat> like, in, on multiple different angles. But I just cool. mean, like, the, the Death Star is always with the, the, the blaster kind of on the top. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah, it's yeah, always, yeah. it always has to look that, that, like that also, for film. But yeah. even that spinning out scene, like, I, I don't know that he would have... In space, no one can see you spin. Right? Exactly. Like, would he have felt that spinning like crazy hard like that? Or? Oh, he would have felt the G's on it. Yeah, right? I guess you're right. Yeah, you're right, the G's right, would have right. felt the G's. Uh, but evening out would have been easier because it's not like, oh, I have to get down to this angle. It's hey, like, man, I, they actually straight. have to practice that, though. And like at NASA, you ever seen that machine that goes, because you have to practice how to steady a ship if it's doing that. We should do that. Forces. Centrifuge. Oh, God, that. I'll throw up and pass out. Most people pass I want to do that so yeah. bad. Yeah. Uh, great shot, kid. That was one in a million. Han screams back to Luke as they've saved the day. When they land, Luke is excited to see Han. Leia tells him she knew there was more to him than just money, uh, like his six foot one stature and his beautiful, All right. beautiful eyes. Uh, just prime baby making height. You know what I mean? Six one, that's Jesus. perfect. Luke, Leia, and Han walk out of the hangar arm in arm, forcing Chewie, uh, uh, followed by Chewie, who nobody, I guess, really cares about, as proven in this next scene, when they go to this grand ceremony that is to honor them, and it's uh, Luke, and it's Han, and it's Chewie walking down the aisle with the entire Rebel Alliance looking on and clapping and cheering them as Luke and Han step up and get awards, and Chewie is just snubbed. He didn't do shit except for pilot the fucking... Millennium Falcon a bunch of times and help everyone out. He gets the last line. Did though. he pilot? Yeah, when they were blasting the fi- Tie Fighters to get away, he had to pilot. Someone had to fucking pilot mm. that. This shit. whole scene is just so it's chill inducing. So where it's good. Just, it's some weird shit with the smirks they give and the looks and whatever. Like, like it, it feels like a movie more than a lot of the rest yeah. of it does. But it's just still so rewarding. And the moment when it goes, the the music swells. Do 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 do. Oh, what good. the iris wipe out man. directed so damn George good Lucas. and no lie this was the moment i fell in love with bomber jackets when luke came yeah, out dude. in that hideous yellow bomber so jacket cool. but it when worked I was well with kid, the brown like, pants though i want to look like him yeah cool. I look and like this whole cool. when the music's playing though in the ceremony like my mind is like is there an actual band yeah. playing there <laughs> so <laughs> i i brought this up at some point but there's a youtube video Uh-oh. of this scene 
with no audio, with no music. <laughs> it's awkward. It's just it, yeah. the, mu- the the sounds of the what's going on. And it's you, got, you guys got to check it out. It's like YouTube it. I'm, I'm sure you guys can fucking find it. It's so funny because it's dead silent. It's just like, well, that, you hear one person <laughs> cough for a second. You hear <laughs> random R2 just shuffling. <laughs> it's so fucking funny. I love so like funny. That. Uh, shout out to uh, right when Luke gets off of the X Wayne as well. Uh, he was so excited. Like in that take, he was just so out of it and excited. He actually calls Leia Carrie, oh, and they wow. left that in. Just really? Like, oh, just really? A little Didn't notice that. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Of course, you, I, I forgot also that R2 was fried. And they're like, oh, he's so fried. And c 3 like, I'll give you any of my circuits. If I, and dude, we got fucking parts back here, bro. I love but that there is that, that yeah. reveal right afterwards of like shiny uh, yeah, he's also, R2. And he's like hopping around. Like, it. <laughs> it's great. Oh uh, of course, they all turn, they bow, or, or they turn, and they get the accolades of everyone who starts clapping. And then we get the uh, the iconic iris wipe out to uh, to the credits. So Man. damn good. I'm getting yelled at in the chat now, so I, I guess I'm wrong. But that was About a little what? story that I liked. Carrie, Carrie thing. Yeah. Well, that's a cool story. That's like yeah. a ma- like probably I'm a Mandela effect sort of thing where you, yeah, I guess you heard There's it. There's just now so many like through. rumors and stories about Star Wars that you grow up with, like. I remember my uh, dad and I talking about that one, so I guess it's like there thing. was a. Like I guess a, fuck me. One right. of the stormtroopers was hanging in the background. No, that's what. No, that's what, about <laughs> what I like about this, what I like about looking at this. Is like everyone gets a change of clothes except for Han. Han never gets to change. He always has to wear the same outfit. You the know time. that Han has seven of those outfits. He just opens the closet. He went like, to I change and it. he was like, "I nailed it." And they're all stinky. Oh, it's like um, when Lando had all those capes and in Solo, and he's just like, "Why is like, why do they have so many capes?" Dope as fuck. Seven uh, syllables in the middle. You need five for the first and last line. Ha, ha, ha. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. Hey, everybody now, stop. You can go to patreon.com slash kindoffunny to write your review in haiku form, just like at Kessel Winks did. <laughs> Winks is such a funny thing to Winks, add stuff. Winks. Uh, One season more. What's the worst that could happen? Owen was dead wrong. Oh, damn. Wow. That's so true. <laughs> he deserved damn. it. He deserved it. I mean, uh, he Vince Patel says, hero or terrorist? Still no medal for Chewy. What the F, Leia? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Uh, Ignacio Rojas says, Luke has feelings for Leia. Obi knows the truth and says nothing. That shit's messed up, yo. Yeah, it is. That's fucked up. Yeah, he probably could have slid him and like, dude, just don't. He Chase, still can, though. Like, hey, what, Luke, I'm still Leia, around. what's your last name? Organa? Oh, you you know you guys maybe shouldn't hang out so <laughs> close. <laughs> hey, hey. Yeah, uh, Chase Winters. Jesus. Chase Winters says he doesn't like you, and he doesn't know the rule. Talk shit gets shot. Ah. <laughs> Fool. Talk shit gets your arm cut off. He made he had to make it rhyme and have the right amount of syllables, yeah, so we added full. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Those the the Patreon haiku and review. Sick. Now it's time for ragu bagus. <laughs> What's up, everybody? This is Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, Volume 9. Am I in this season? I don't know if it is. And today's Ragu Bagu squad is me, Andy Cortez, your host, and my co-host, Kevin Coelho. And Tim Gettys oh, and Nick Scarpino yeah, and Baron right. Courtney. Oh my God! Everybody, 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 everybody Smash Bros. Everybody's right. here. Smash I nominate Tarkin everybody's for this here. one. Everybody's here. Everybody's here. I know that Vader plays a big role, but I feel like Vader is in all of them. I feel, like, Tar- I feel like Tarkin. I feel and like Vader Tarkin are is the it's main. It's my boy Tark. I, I'll put. Saying, I, I think Tarkin. it should just be Tarkin. Cool. Okay, let's just do I'm Tarkin. Not. But I also, hear, like, Vader fought Obi Wan. Yeah, like, that was kind of a big scene. That's true. That's true. It made a lot of sense. I will say this to Tarkin. Right, great leader. Obviously, good enough as a an imposing figure and competent enough to keep Vader in check, mm-hmm. but a little too much ego. Because when asked, "Sir, maybe we should we should prepare your ship," he's like, "Are you fucking kidding me? I'm not leaving this thing. There's nowhere." Yeah. There. Whoa, well, no! Moment, man. Yeah. But I get it. But so, but I do mean? I do see what you're saying, putting him on top because yeah. this is his only movie it's that Tark, he shines. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Tarkin's pretty. So nice. number and one, I feel like he has good moments to shine too. To shine. Number like, one, Tark Vader. Tark, Tark Vader, Vader, baby. Oh, oh that was is. good. Uh, that was great. I didn't expect you to get there, but that, that was really good. Yeah, and follow us on Ragu Bagu Vids on Twitter. It's spelled R A G U B A G U V I D S. Why is that the name? Because we create. We were gonna make it Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, and Greg thought it would be great to shorten it. Shorten it down to Ragu Bagu. Right. <laughs> it's such a great Ragu. Twitter handle that you have to explain Ragu. it. Ragu. Oh, we've been doing this show a long, a long time, time now, long man. Time. It's yeah, history. Yeah. Yeah. Gotta love it. Uh, now it is time to rank the Star Wars cinematic universe. 
obviously this one's number one. Number one. Mm-hmm. We're just yeah. kicking yeah. it yeah. off. Yeah. But yeah. it's just like, David. Great movie. It's, a good I, movie. I will say that watching this movie again for the upding time, but it's been a while. It's been maybe like four years ago, I think, that I watched them all with Gia for the first time. It's been like three for me, I'd say. And I think that this was my favorite time ever watching this movie. Me too. Like, I, I, there was something about it where it's just knowing everything and like where Star Wars is at. It's like, I feel like over time, I kind of looked back on this one and was just like, it's fine. There's an appreciation for it. It's more than fine, man. Like, this one is really fucking special. And I get a lot of shit uh, in the comments for uh, always talking about, like, people think that I only like modern movies. This is proof that, no, it's like when you make a movie that fucking works, it can complain about something else, dude. Fantastic. And that, that, when I started watching (laughs) yeah, exactly. When I started watching talking shit about my friend? (laughs) (laughs) Um, A little of the hesitation. I was like, oh, man, I don't want to go back and watch this with a critical eye because I'm scared it's not going to hold up. And I'm happy that this one just, again, like watching it from when I, the decades that I've been watching this movie, it really does. I felt like a kid again. The the fantasy, the, the mythology of all of it i it's one thing that i've grown up loving is just like the lore the background what's in this universe what you know who are the key players in this uh galaxy and it's just so cool to kind of re-experience all that yeah same uh, it's uh <clears throat> sorry to cut you off Kevin. Do no you okay. Go i was just it, gonna say go for it oh uh yeah this is like one of the uh, watching this movie was one of my first memories as a kid of like watching vader come up and it's just it's great and it, 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 it's one of those things you know it holds up because you can watch a movie from, at this point, f- fucking 40 years ago. No, 30? 40. 40. 40. 40. No, longer. And it, it, 77. Yeah, yeah, yeah 40. 42. So it, it's just one of those things, like, even nostalgia, like, it overcomes nostalgia in, in that part, and that's why I really love it. And I also wanted to show off my Mos Eisley shirt. <laughs> <laughs> there shirt, you go. That's a great shirt. Uh, I was just going to say, I, I have watched, I, I feel like I watched it, like, six months ago, not too long ago, but like it was very interesting going in there with like kind of like a critical eye where it's like I know that we're gonna sit down and like try to break this apart and find moments that laugh to laugh about. And like I feel like weirdly enough, I feel like I got more out of it than I have in a long time because it was like trying to be, you know, more concentrated on it. And it's just like watching RTD2 move around in the background and just little things. It, it's interesting and I'm, I'm happy we're doing this. I feel like this series is gonna like, I. I feel like throughout all of like in review at, uh, in total that I've always been sort of a stickler for special effects. These movies get the pass for me just because you know it's the seventies, right? But I, I the ones that really stick out to me are the remastered yeah. CG. You know, like I, <laughs> I I I have such an appreciation for the models and the miniatures. And there's that one website we looked at when we were doing an old morning show way back in the day where it was like, here are all of the miniatures, and they're like. The Star Destroyer is like this big, really and it's just huge. so cool to see all the detail. I have such an appreciation for that. I got to give you the star, art. man. Like, seeing this was so I, eye-opening to me, where it's like having grown up really with the special editions, like, you, they are designed to draw your eyes to the CG stuff and to the new added stuff. And when that's not there and you're just looking at just a pure the movie, how mm-hmm. it was, it's just, it's such a different experience. It's different, yeah. It hits yeah. different. It, it does. It's, hit it's, different. It's, it's a little smaller in parts, too. Like when they go into Moss Eisley and you only see like a few things there, it's it's not it's not this grand sweeping giant. It doesn't city. feel like episode one. Yeah. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Which so. is, it's fine. It's fine, though. though. Yeah. But you I didn't need to. I thought it was a, a lot of fun watching this. I can't wait to keep watching more. Same. And I, I'm even excited to see the prequels. I'm excited to see the sequels. I'm excited to see all of it, really. Like, right. I think that us watching them back to back, like in this way, I think is going to be a lot of fun, especially the leading into nine. I the end of it all, man. I haven't uh, seen the wait. prequels. I think in oh, fuck. No, you know what? I saw the. I'm lying. I saw the. I saw Phantom Menace when it came back in theaters in 3D. 3D. God, yeah, man. that was the most recent time. <laughs> and God. I saw Attack of the Clones in the hotel when we were in Toronto. Oh, yeah. we were just on TV, and I was like, "Let me see this shit Let's show." But <laughs> I am excited to just watch it, you know, because it was just on TV, and I was just kind of like taking a glance at the the silly scenes or whatever. But I am really excited to go back, and I haven't seen Revenge of the Sith, and what feels like I don't know since I guess before Force Awakens came out, you know. Oh. Phantom Menace going to watch it in 3D. I think that was, was that the last time we watched a midnight release? Yeah, Kevin and I went literally at midnight to Aye. watch this thing. Because we, we were, were just bored. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, we were excited. Yeah, I was excited. We were like, was that oh like my the God. original release of Phantom the, Menace? No, no. no, 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 no we were talking about the 3D. Yeah. 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 Because is why I'm like, why? They were going to re release all of them in 3D. Yeah, that was And then Disney bought them. It did. No, it didn't. No, it did poorly. Oh, I thought it was because Disney bought them. No, it did poorly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Phantom Menace in 3D was dope. The 3D yeah. stuff was cool. The pod racing in 3D was Looked really great. cool. 
But, but that fucking movie. The movie is the movie. Yeah. yeah, I watched that movie with my buddy Travis, who's like the biggest Star Wars fan I know. It, his, our, when we lived in Austin, our garage was just all giant Tupperware, like, crates of just toys and all sorts of shit. He has a like, he has a Star Wars Andy, podcast. Andy, bigger than me. Yeah, bigger than you. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Are you serious? Yeah, yeah, for sure. shirt. Have we talked about that? No, yet? we have not talked oh, about. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, thinking about dope things, I am wearing our Patreon fan mail tier exclusive Ooh. shirt this month. I think it's shot Which too. is the kind of funny Star Wars themed logo with the words the sirens are our end in the middle of it. If you guys want to grab that, go over to Patreon. I, I, I can't. All right. Yeah, no, it is. I can't it's tell which way I'm at. Mirror. It's like mirror. Uh, if you guys want this shirt, go over to Patreon.com slash kind of funny and back us at that fan mail tier and you'll get it in your mail sometime between now and the time the last movie comes out. 2020. Hopefully. Um, the last thing I want to say is just like, I think all of the stories that we've told with production, I think is like a lot of the charm of this movie as well. And I think for like, at the end of the day, whatever the ranking is, like this has got to be like a top tier one just because of all of the weird shit that they had to do in the back end to make what ended up being a very magical movie. And to give context, I think I watched these last year, but I did it in like the dumb chronological order. order. Yeah. Uh, and I included like the TV shows and shit. So it was like the Why? prequels and because the TV shows are fucking good. Why? You... Really? Yeah. Clone Wars stuff. People Clone, like Clone Wars, Wars is fucking awesome, uh, and Rebels is fucking awesome. People like them. Yeah. yeah. Clone Wars, like the first two. They were always too kiddy for me. That's why I couldn't yeah. get. No, them. the first season is definitely the first season is definitely like episodic. Like, what's the villain of the week? But when it when it gets to season two, and there's like kind of this full plot that they uh, reveal, it's it's fucking rad. So yeah, I'm excited to do the, the right way and uh, rot- uh, watch them in the release order. You know, else is really cool, guys. Mm. Mandaloids coming fun yeah. out soon. Away. Uh, but next week, we are going to be doing Star Wars The Empire Strikes Fucking Back. Yeah. Let's go. Here we go. Let's go. I can't, I can't wait. wait. Until then, let's go on a Tashi station and pick up some power converters.